When it comes to protein, they're not all created equal. Some proteins are better than others in the context of a diet that isn't high or super high in protein. In other words, unless you're eating the super high levels of protein that we tend to recommend, closer to one gram per pound of body weight, pay attention to the type of protein you're eating. It actually makes a difference. Yeah. Yeah, this one's always stir stirs up a little uh, uh, controversy among the vegans, I would say, um, mm. because, uh, and the data's pretty good on this, right? Uh, and again, let's paint the context. If you're eating, now the, I'll, I'll go with the data because we say one gram of protein per pound of body weight just to make it safe. But the data shows about 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 grams of protein per pound of, uh, of body weight, roughly. We say a gram because people tend to miss that. So we want to make sure people hit it. But unless you're eating that high amount, then the type of protein you eat uh, matters. And the data shows us that plant proteins are tend to be inferior tend to, because you could always find one plant better that's better than maybe an, an animal source. But generally speaking, plant proteins don't have the same amino acid profile that's beneficial. And we now have studies that show they just don't get absorbed by the gut as well as the animal sources. Now, so, does, this, does this stay yeah. true uh, even when you're comparing to you know protein powders like Organifi that use a blend of plant protein? It's not like it's just coming from peas or just like... It's not coming from one source. It's it's blended. And that so makes it better for sure. So when you when you use a blend, what you're trying to do is complement amino acid profiles. So if one protein type is um, let's say low in one of the branching amino acids, then you'll try and get another protein to complement it that may be high um, in it. That's why the old what was the old uh, adage, um, you know, beans and rice creates a complete protein. You ever hear that? I don't know how mm -hmm. true that is, but I remember. Hearing that um, uh, as a as a kid working out from vegan bodybuilders, nonetheless, um, a blend is better than a single source. However, animal sources are just superior across the board. Um, whey protein, egg protein, at the top of the list. Um, beef, very good. Chicken. I mean, all animal sources just tend to be better because they t they're easier to absorb, so their bioavailability is better, um, and they tend to be higher, especially proteins like whey and, and egg in the branch chain amino acids, uh, leucine, isoleucine, and valine. And uh, when your protein intake is below that upper threshold that we're talking about, the branch chain amino acid, especially the uh, leucine, especially leucine, makes a difference when it comes to uh, muscle protein synthesis. So leucine amount or leucine levels will help dictate how much muscle you build. Again, I want to be clear. Uh, if your protein intake is really high, it doesn't matter. So if you're eating one gram per pound of body weight or target body weight, then it, it could all be plant. It could all be whatever. But if you're below that, which a lot of people watching this are below that, most people um, that I've ever worked with. In fact, it was rare that I worked with someone that consistently hit the high protein targets. Rare. Well, we're going through this right now. It's interesting to watch too because uh, Ethan, my oldest, he's like very – into tracking his protein right now and trying to get it first thing in the morning. And this is all on his own just because he knows he's putting all this effort in and training and he's starting to kind of lift weights a little bit. And like he's, he wants to get like muscle and realizing how difficult it is. Like you really don't get a lot of protein from, you know, even your typical meal, your, your typical meal, like even just a couple eggs. And, you know, and he's thinking he's like killing it right now, you know, with, with his, his amount of protein that he's consuming uh, and trying to get it from natural sources, but he has to be so intentional. And, and then to, to the vegan points, like, dude, with the gastro distress and then like your sources, like, you know, that seems like insanely challenging to be able to uh, actively get up to that level of like one to one ratio. What is it about this conversation that every time we have it, we tend to lose people? Like it, it doesn't seem to me like it doesn't seem like it's that complicated of what we're trying to explain. But every time we have this, like something within this will get clipped and taken out of context about uh, what you're saying about comparing yeah. protein powders. Uh, somebody will always misunderstand the point that we make about the 0. 0.6 to 0. 0.8 versus one one gram to one. Like, yeah, why we recommend that. Yeah, yeah. I, like I, I don't understand how, how much more we can communicate this or explain this better because we've done it so many times, but I feel like every time we do, it always uh, you know, riles people up or there's this big argument debate. Yeah. It's like it's really... It's not debatable what we're talking about. Like it's what you need. We're, we're you repeating know? the same. We're 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 
you know, uh, repeating the same studies that we that we've we've all learned already for a long time. We've known this stuff. This isn't new. This isn't new science. For the longest time, when you were a trainer, you were touting the 0.6 to 0.8 of lean body mass. Didn't take that many years of training people to realize getting clients to calculate 0.6 to 0.8 on their lean body mass when they don't know what their lean body mass is at all times and they don't want to get a calculator out to do that. It was just much easier to say, hey, Justin, how much do you want to weigh? Oh, okay, you want to weigh 180? 180 grams of protein is That's what right. we should be taking. Just easy. It's There's easy. And when you factor in that... 95%, if not more, of every client I ever trained uh, was under eating protein when we first got them. So it's a difficult uh, macro to hit consistently. Now, maybe if you're 115 pounds, it's not, but most people aren't 115 pounds. So for the average person who's trying to build muscle, track for the first time, they tend to under eat protein. So giving them a little bit higher target than what the studies and research say is the optimal amount is ideal. It's, it's hard to get it anyway. So we figure, okay, if I give them that target, give us a little bit of a buffer and it's easy for them to calculate. Your point about the proteins, uh, as far as the quality of it, you say every time, listen, if you're hitting above your number, so if you're hitting above that 180 that I recommended for, say, Justin was that person, 180, and you're hitting 200, then it doesn't matter. No. Then it doesn't matter what source you're getting it from. You're getting enough that you're maximizing the benefits. But if you fall in the category of that 95% of people that are missing their protein a lot, then choose the, the best sources. Yeah, choose the best source of protein. It's I, I think it's pretty simple. It, it is, but you know, look, just to illustrate this, you use the the example of a 115 pound individual. You take um, a, a woman whose goal body weight, let's say, is 115 pounds. Okay, if her target could be between let's say 85 or 90 grams to 115 grams of protein, we would say 115 because we know they're going to miss a little. But it, fine, 90. You take the average 115 pound female, tell her eat 90 grams of protein. Okay, so that's 30 grams of protein for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. What is a typical quote unquote high protein breakfast? Two eggs, two slices of bacon. That's yeah. way lower than 30 grams of protein. Yeah. You put a 30 gram protein omelet in front of a 115 pound woman, yeah. or that's her target. She's you not, say eat that. She's she's like, like, oh my God, what is that? It's like six, it's like, you know, five or six. That's like, what is that, five eggs? Yeah, that's yeah. five eggs. She's not going to eat lunch. Who eats <laughs> Who eats five whole eggs for and, breakfast? And weighs, except for body and weighs 120 pounds. Nobody. Now yeah. you take a, a, a young man, take a high school kid who's 150 pounds, and you're like, okay, you got to <laughs> eat. I don't know, 130 grams of protein uh, in a day or 150 grams of protein a day. So that's 40 to 50 grams of protein per meal. How many high school kids do you know start out with a 40 gram of protein breakfast yeah. or 40 gram None. protein lunch? No. Think of your typical quote unquote high protein lunch. What is it? A chicken salad. What do you got? Four ounces of chicken in there? Way low. Yeah. Uh, a sandwich with deli extra, meat. Yeah. extra deli meat. <laughs> 25 grams of protein if you're lucky. If, yeah. right. if you're lucky. I mean, so. this is why you hear me repeat this tip because I thought it was, one, I th it was necessary for me to hit my protein intake. And I found it to be for a lot of my clients, which is carrying over the large meat dinner that you had into breakfast. It just the the yeah. Otherwise, you get behind the eight ball. Yeah, man. the typical standard American breakfast is way low on protein, super high in carbs and fats, and super low on protein. And so, my way of helping my client because I never had a problem getting my client to eat uh, chicken, steak, fish, meat, meats for dinner. It seems pretty standard for the average person. Good to, point. Dinner's typically when people can get close. Yeah, on dinner own. tends to be the easier meal to hit their their protein intake. So what I would just tell them is like double, triple up your portion size and let whatever meat that is carry over into breakfast and scramble it up with eggs. Eggs, rice, or potatoes with that meat. Now we've got ourselves a solid 40 plus gram breakfast, and now we're ahead of our target early on. And, and now the data, look, the data on this is is very clear. There's there's very few things in nutrition science that are super clear. Uh, the data around protein intake is pretty damn clear. If you eat uh, in that what's called the upper limit of protein or the upper limit where you're going to get benefits uh, from protein, which is, again, 0.6 grams to 0.8 grams per pound of, let's say, target body weight. We'll just make it easy to understand. Um, if you're eating that, what you will do, what will happen for the vast majority of people, unless there's digestive issues, unless a person has gut problems, of course, there's individual variants, uh, but this is the vast majority of people I'm talking about. You'll build muscle much faster. 
you'll burn more body fat, even if the calories are the same. In other words, when you take two diets, exact same calories, one's high protein, one's low protein, the high protein diet results in more fat loss, more pure fat loss and less muscle loss. Every time you diet, your body tries to pare muscle down. That doesn't happen nearly as much when your protein is high. Um, you also have an appetite suppressing effect from protein. So for fat loss, it's great. So it's great for building. It's also great for losing. So across the board, regardless of what your goal is, and of course, athletic performance and all that stuff, regardless of what your goal is, this makes a difference. It makes a big difference. It's a measurable difference um, in the studies. So, um, you know, it's, it's interesting that people debate this because because what you'll get is like the bodybuilder that's like, well, I'm a vegan. I don't eat tons of protein. Look at me. Yes, my grandfather smoked cigarettes from the age of nine till he died at 92. It's not evidence that cigarette smoke is not bad for you. We know this. We're talking about studies generally. The average person, most people watching, listening to this, if you do this consistently on a regular basis, what you'll see is better results. It's just what will happen. Yeah. yeah. And Since we're talking about protein powders too, I think this is a, a good time to talk about too that I don't know if you guys remember this. For me, this was really common. I would give a client a recommendation and then I would normally tell them like, oh, go get this protein powder. And they almost always would come back and be like, oh, I found this other one. You know, at, <laughs> at CVS yeah. for cheaper, for yeah, a fraction of the price. Yeah. Target, like, here's yeah. target. Protein. And then I and then I'd, I'd show them. And I think this is like one of the greatest uh, protein powder hustles in, in the market, which is the um, reduce the uh, protein in per serving and show that you have a ton more servings in there. So in other words, and you could sell it for cheaper, right? Same you price, know, more just servings, a much more filler in there. Instead. Yes, but and it's so, fifteen grams. Per and serve. so someone sees the two jugs that look like they're about the same size, but one of them's half the price. And what they don't realize is it takes double the scoop of that one that was half the price to equate yeah. to the same amount of protein. It's like the like most common how, hustle how, ever. How yeah. old were you when you figured this out? Were you a trainer when you figured this out? Uh, I was before a trainer because I remember the first time I fell for it. I remember the first time I found CV. I used that example because it happened to me, right? I remember going to get a protein powder, seeing a super cheap one, I went, oh my God, I'm gonna get this one. And then when I actually opened it up, started doing it, and then I read the serving size, I was like, wait a second. <laughs> I'm having to do double the amount <laughs> yeah. of scoops to equate to my other one that was Dude. double the price. I'm like, it's the same thing. This happened to me with weight gain. And now I'm getting a generic brand too. So I've told this story before, but it's hilarious. When, uh, weight gainers were really popular in the late 90s, oh, yeah. uh, especially mid to late 90s. Right? like Celtech and No, no this falls were, right in line with the same Celtech. hustle. It's the opposite direction though. Yeah. You need eight scoops. So, in order, bro, yeah. Here's your I, weight gainer. It's like oh, basically it's protein powder oh, times eight. This, this yeah. hit, I remember this is the first time I, I, li I realized, because I was young. I must have been 15 when, the, when I fell for this. Uh, this is the first time I realized that the supplement industry is often full of shit. I'll never forget. I used to buy, so in the, in the mid nineties, weight gainers were all the rage, like not protein powders, but weight gainers. So they had protein in them, but they also threw a bunch of dextrose and carbs. Yeah, to, a bunch of sugar in there. With yeah. It. And then they tell you to, so what they would do is they would say, and they'd have it, the, the title of the, or the name of the supplement would always have a number like mega mass one thousand. So I started with <laughs> mass builders. I stayed. Stuff, right? I started yeah. with Gainers Fuel one thousand. Yeah. Yeah. That was Twin Lab <laughs> Gainers Fuel one thousand. One thousand calories per serving. They don't tell you by the way that five hundred of those calories come from the whole milk. They tell you to blend with it. It's like twenty ounces of whole milk. <laughs> but I did that right, and then I remember I went to the store. I used to go to this uh, vitamin shop with my dad when I was a kid. So I, I, I worked real young, and I'd save my money. And I went in there. And I was going to buy my Gainers Fuel, and then right next to it was this. This jug of Mega Mass 2000. I'm like, 2000? 2000. Oh, Sweet. shit. This is going to be way more effective. Yeah. Bought that. And then it was like three months later. So I was taking Mega Mass 2000, right? That was my supplement, of my, my weight gainer of choice. Then they came out with Mega Mass 4000. So the same <laughs> company had 4000. And I was like, this is amazing. Now it came in what looked like a paint bucket. So it looked like a bucket with a lid that literally was like a paint bucket. And I was so hyped. I'm like 4,000 calories. Like for sure I'm going to get jacked. Like I'm yeah. instantly doubling my calories. And I opened the lid and the Mega Mass 2000 had a scoop that was like that big. Mega Mass 4,000 had, <laughs> it, bro, it looked like like when you go to the beach with your kids and they use things to, 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 <laughs> yeah. to shovel out a hole in the sand. Yeah. yeah. It like was a trowel. A, <laughs> it was like a box little bucket thing. Yeah. And this huge thing had like 15 servings. Yeah. And then I, I was 15 years old. I'm, I'm looking at I'm like, I know what these people just did. Oh, you son of a bitch, dude. I, you, you, know, you know what works all the way to the other extreme? Even when you break down like what a like a slim fast is or some of these things, they yeah. just they just I mean, it's all protein, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. With paired with some sort of a sh basic sugar, right? To to for you to, to digest it and everything like that. And they just 
double, triple, quadruple the size, the portion size, yeah. or reduce it by reduce it. X now amount a, yeah. so they could be light. It's so yeah. funny. It's all the lean, same. Yeah. You know what's making Diet. you know what's making me laugh about this? I love I, and I got to communicate this because people we often fall for the supplement industry's marketing, and the supplement industry's marketing will shift and change based on the culture and totally. what's popular, not popular. So in the mid '90s, low fat was the rage. Like, if you want to get fit and healthy, you have to have a low fat diet. So weight gainers, even though they were three thousand calories, two thousand, couple thousand calories, low fat, they would also say low fat because yeah. God forbid, even though you're eating four thousand calorie shake, you know, <laughs> with, with you know, one hundred and eighty grams of sugar there, or something oh like that, right? It said low fat. So you'd look at the back of it and be like, wow, four thousand calories, and it only has five grams of fat. Then a company comes out and they were brilliant. And this is brilliant supplement marketing, by the way. If the whole supplement industry is going this way, sometimes you can go the opposite direction, then you'll get attention. Yeah. So a company comes out. I'm going to say it right now. I'm just going to know this company. A company comes out and says, ours is higher in fat, but these are fat burning fats. We have MCTs in there. <laughs> the first company to do that, that really went big was Muscle Milk. Remember yeah. Muscle? You guys know oh, Muscle Milk. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Muscle, now, muscle, now, here's the other thing. You add fat to a weight gainer, and you've increased, you've improved its palatability. Yes. So I remember we bought Muscle Milk, yeah. Yeah. and we were drinking it. We're like, oh it my tastes god, tastes way better, yeah. And we're like, it's not gonna make us fat though, because it's got, yeah. <laughs> it's got fat burning fat, fat burning fat. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember that part of it. <laughs> oh, it's so, it's so funny. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, I have a free guide that teaches you how to lose fat in three steps, just three steps, that will burn the most amount of body fat and help keep it off. This guide is totally free. We're giving it to everybody right now. If you want it, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Oh, this, uh, by the way, I got to tell you. So I'm thinking of this industry like like it's a uh, like a, like a drug industry. A drug. Do I took my my kids to my mom's house last week? There's some stereotypes that are super true, and one of them, and all my my listeners, all the listeners that we have that are Italian, will tell you that the old old Italians will sneak money to your kids <laughs> like it's a drug deal. I don't understand it. It's a real thing though. Like we get there. And my grandma is crumpled up in her hand. Like she's this. in the mid, she's in her mid eighties. She's not very mobile. You know, <laughs> she's like full-time care. My mom and dad, she lives with my parents. She's got a walker and we get there and we just happened to get there when she was coming out of the bathroom with her walker. So she's like, Oh, Hey, say hi. And also the kids. So then my grandma, I could see her looking at me to see, to watch me like turn around or something. It, so I'm like, I kind of turn around. But then I look and she reaches in her, she's got like a robe on, a bathrobe on, and she reaches in and she goes like this, like covers the money with her fingers and go puts it in the kid's hand and goes, shh. <laughs> <laughs> now my kid's three years old. Not, He's yeah. going to tell me, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, I remember my, my great grandparents doing the same thing to me. They would sneak money to us or my great grandfather or grandmother would come up to me and she, they'd give me a hug and then they put the money in my pocket for me and they'd yeah. say, don't tell anybody. Why do they do that? That's it's the funniest thing. It is. I don't understand. I mean, I'd it. prefer that over candy. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say that's yeah. my family was notorious for the candy and like sneaking that in any opportunity they can. It's like, oh, here. Yeah, you don't know, tell dad. Is, yeah, don't tell dad. I know your dad doesn't want you to have this. Now oh. the candy one, I get right because everybody love, and I know what that is. It's that everybody loves the reaction that the kid gets when you, yeah. kid, especially when you introduce it for the first time. It's like they they get all these. I mean, there's viral videos on kids' reactions to sugar and candy, right? Which is kind of ironic that we've. Yeah. Turn it into like a funny meme thing. It's like, hey, dude, give your kid cocaine. Check it out. Look, <laughs> watch their face do weird shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, give your kid cocaine. Have him play with Legos. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, viral clip. I wonder. But the money thing is different. You right? know, like, I'm thinking about just it. running outside. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just spiff off here. But I wonder if it's because our the cultures came back from really poor, like Great Depression That's beginnings. It. Yeah. So I'm wondering if they're telling them, here's the money. Don't tell your parents because maybe your parents will take it and, uh, and need it. So yeah. this is yours. That makes sense. To go buy what oh, you that want. That makes sense. Maybe that's why. That makes so my sense. kids don't give a shit. Their their dad's rich. So they, <laughs> <laughs> my my kids take the five dollar bill and they give it to me. Can you hold this for me? They don't care. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Blowing their nose yeah. in it. Or, or even better, they don't, like thanks. I didn't even, have a tissue. Even better, my younger one looks at paper money like he doesn't. He's like, what's this? Because he, he understands Apple Pay. Oh my god! So when he pretends to go shopping, he has like we have like a grocery fake groceries and like a kitchen and stuff. Yeah, and we'll play like shopping. He always. He always does Apple Pay. He doesn't pay with fake oh, that's, money. That's whatever. funny. I wonder if that, yeah, because my oldest too, he's all about Apple Pay. He doesn't want like cash for some reason. Neither he is my 14 year old. Apple Pay. I've, I've trained myself to use it way more now. 
I the use, Apple Pay? I used to never use yeah. it. it. Well, almost everywhere accepts it. I like it. Mm-hmm. I love it. I mean, because you know what's funny is you can text. You're people. more likely to leave your wallet somewhere than leave your phone. Yep. Mm-hmm. Your phone is like yep. another appendage, right, for everybody. And so many times I'm running into the store or something like that. And I'm like, ah, oh, shit, forgot yeah. my wallet in the car. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, wait a second. You guys have Apple Pay? Yeah, yeah, we have Apple Pay. And I'm like, oh, this is yeah. actually really now. Nice. I I I still use cash, but only when I pay for people for services where I think the person appreciates it. So like Gardner or whatever. I think it's like a I'm not going to dance. No. Like <laughs> <laughs> He's supporting all them single moms. Out Do there. they use Apple pay? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <These days. laughs> where do i swipe this scan. where do i swipe this <laughs> make it rain <laughs> no, stupid. so nice of you. i wonder is that so even nice a thing you, oh, like exotic funny. dancers is that a thing no not that the, oh I'm apple sure. having them apple yeah, of so course weird. there is that there's got to be one who who's who's on to that savvy like did that I, yeah. did i ever tell you be silly not maybe to. they have like an apple watch i wouldn't be surprised like, I would, it's been a long time since i've been to a strip club i wouldn't be surprised if when they come out now they have like a little <laughs> qr code you know what I'm saying? Like they come out their little plastic a string or come something. Come out their little boop, boop. plastic ace fr- yeah. frame and they put it on the stage. Yeah. I yes. bet they do. Someone yeah. look that up there. No, don't look that I up. I bet they what are you do. Find? Huh? <laughs> don't look that up. You don't think they do that? Maybe I bet like they an do Apple that. Watch maybe. Do, can have do you it, seen right? some like when you go to like uh, I had a homeless guy once uh, uh, tell me to Venmo. Did I ever wow. tell you that? No. I swear I swear to God. <laughs> really? Yes. That's long time ago. Advanced. Long time ago. He's he had a Venmo for money. I was like, this is I feel weird about this. I don't know if I feel like you're homeless. Yeah. <laughs> Anymore. But, that is weird. Yeah. And the fact Silicon Valley homeless. Yeah. It, 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 no, well, I remember weird. the first time I'd seen it, I'd We've seen evolved. I'd seen a homeless person with an iPhone. I mean, that in itself is just like that's a pretty expensive uh, thing to have. Yeah, I that's mean, not like, uncommon though yeah. anymore. It's, it's no, weird. that's more common. Anyway, we're just talking about drugs. I want to hear about what you learned about Nazis and meth, Justin. We were, oh, we, I was we were about listening. to go off. Great transition. Yeah, isn't that great? Or yeah, no, I was. I was just listening. This guy was on uh, the Rogan, and uh, he he basically wrote a book about um, the usage of methamphetamines uh, with the Nazis and how it was like prescribed back in the day and. Uh, they were just like talking about all the benefits of, cause they didn't really like drink coffee and like, you know, use caffeine. Yeah. Why would you drink bit. coffee yeah, when you have meth? You get meth. <laughs> you get meth. Yeah. I mean, they were just like doling it out, uh, to, to anybody like uh, soldiers wise. And it was interesting because they're talking about the dichotomy of that being so, um, you know, law and order and, and, and authoritarian, but at the same time, like, they didn't really like talk about the drug usage as much. Like that was like rampant uh, in terms of them being productive and keeping their war efforts going. Like, well, wasn't it, I mean, Hitler was known to be like on one all the time. He went, right? he went pretty crazy. You with, ever with seen the video of him at the 19, is it 32 Olympics hosted uh-huh. by them? I think it was a 1932 Olympics. He's just ranting and rah, like, no, no, he's sitting in his chair. You never like, saw like, that? Tweaking. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's sitting in his chair. I think it was 1932 or 1936. I can't remember which Olympics. One of those. And he's sitting there and he's he's doing this. And he's literally yeah. uh, high as hell yeah. on, on meth. Yeah. You know? You know, you know that they- now, uh, it was, uh, w- now, we know this now, or was it widely known even then? Like, was so it, was it, was, it, was, it like, wasn't. Like I said, it was like, wasn't talked about a lot. Uh, and so it, it was kind of speculated, but he actually went through the old records. And I guess like a lot of people have built off of other oh, people. Yeah, there he is right That's there. A famous clip. What year is that, Doug? Does that say? I'm not sure, but I do believe it's no 1936. 1936 Olympics. Yeah, dude, yeah. look at him. Yeah, but You're they on had something for sure. They had written accounts of like all the experiments they did. Everything It's like all the pseudoscience that they were trying to gather. So there was a lot of records of like soldiers and everybody else that was like using um, whatever because they because they even used like. Uh, um, uh, like psychedelics, and so that was like that's his next follow up book is like how they Nazis, actually, yeah, they actually use psychedelics Whoa. Uh, as well, and so th- they're just finding all this stuff out based off of these records that they wrote. Do you know that they advertised? Um, I think I want to say meth or amphetamines. I should say amphetamines. Uh, um, to be I guess more accurate, or whatever they would advertise them in women's magazines. I want to say in the forties. Uh, to help them with housework. Oh, yeah. Or, you know? I've seen those ads before. Yeah, like put yeah. more, you know, zip in your step or yeah. stuff like that. Give you more vigor, <laughs> you know, to help you, you know, around the house. It was or- called something else, though. They were called, they marketed them as something else. I can't I remember what they were. Maybe, maybe, Not Doug, greenies or something. They were something else they called them. I Doug, can't. maybe you can look up old amphetamine ads for women. I want to see. I've seen it before. But they, but the way that they would do the ads were funny, too. Yeah, it was yeah. like, do more housework or be mm-hmm. happy when your husband comes home. Make sure you pop one of these type of deal. Mm-hmm. They were and, and they were buying them like what? 
<laughs> whatever. So crazy. House, house is spotless. So crazy. Yeah. How did this? <laughs> yeah. This hey, happen? I want to know. No downside. I, I give me uh, the rundown. I missed out on hot August nights. I mean, we were up. Uh, uh, I would have been there with you, except for I had a, a trip already planned to Yosemite. So I want to hear about hot August nights. Oh yeah, it was. I mean, it's a it's a long story. Like there was ups and downs for sure. It was great time, like hanging out with my dad and like uh, spending time with just him a boys stuff. trip. It was gonna be just a boys trip. Uh, so if I go all the way back to when I planned it, I planned it in like October of last year. Yeah. I, I bought this car, the GTO, shipped it down to my buddy who- God, it's been that long, Justin, already? Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I know. Dude, not to, not like, to throw ah. salt on the wound, sorry. Yeah, it, sorry. it is. It's very, it's very open wound. Uh, so my buddy, he's, he used to work on that show, um, with Chip Foose, uh, called Overhauling. Oh yeah. And so he kind of spawned off and created his own- uh, shop where he works on cars. And so anyway, he was a good buddy of mine. And so I sent it there and like, he was working on it and then wait for all these parts. And so there was this like, just lag with parts forever. And anyway, it got to the point where, um, it's crunch time, I'm like a couple weeks out. We even went down to try one time to go see if it was ready to pick it up. And then it wasn't ready. And then I went back again the next week and, you know, there was just like this, this stall with, with getting the right things and these mounts that he needed. I'm like, okay, whatever. I just, I have to realize I'm not going to have it. So I didn't have it. I had already ordered this like a transport as my, as like a gift for my dad and, and myself to, um, you know, so he didn't have to drive it all the way up because his car's broken down. I think the last three times he's been up. Um, and so I was like, well, overheated, right? yeah, overheated yeah. And, and, you know, and he's, he's solved that and he has somebody working on his car and, uh, so we, we just had one now. So we transported that. It was like four hours late, uh, first of all, to, to transport the car. And so I'm like trying to manage this for him, you know, while also working and doing all this stuff here. And it finally shows up. I get up there with the kids. I brought the kids up with Courtney and, and my mom. And so they had like one day up there, but then they had to come back real quick for orientation for school. And so then it's just me and my dad. So we're up there and we're seeing the cars. It's hot as hell. Uh, and you know, I had a good time checking out all the cars and the auction and there was like some crazy deals like people were getting away with because some, some car will go up there and, um, it's like, it's gotta be like a hundred thousand dollar car, right? Like they put a lot of work into this thing, but apparently they need money. And so they went, it went through the first time they didn't get what they wanted from bids. Second time it goes through, they take the reserves off Oh wow! and then it was like, you know, gangbusters, but then it only got like half of what they wanted. Wow. And so it's sold. It, like somebody got like a hundred thousand dollar car for like 50,000. So it's like a good, great place to buy a collectible. Yeah. So I was mean, your car ready then? So no, I was up there without my car, oh, which sucked. sucked. It sucked. Yeah. So I was like <laughs> driving around my dad's car, which is cool. It's like a, it's like a daily reminder while you're up there. It is. It was, <laughs> like, oh, it was like, it's oh, almost oh, worse to what be What did your dad there. have again? He's got a 56 Bel Air. Uh, Bel Air. Oh, yeah. wow. That's great. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, they got swap meets and they got all these events and things to do. And so I was like, kind of, I don't know. I was cruising around with my dad. Uh, but one of the times I'm, I'm driving now. And so this is just like, I don't know. I have this weird cloud around me or something, dude. Like I was driving on the freeway, uh, after we were cruising and the car got a little hot, but it wasn't crazy. And it's a four lane freeway and I'm on all the way to the left. So I'm, I'm like away from any exit or anything. And all of a sudden the engine just shuts off and I, when I'm driving it like real time and it's just like, gur, 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 like just cuts out. And I'm like, okay, there's something wrong with the car. Oh. And I'm like trying to work my way over. It's still moving, you know, cause like I had all this speed, but uh, all of a sudden this semi is like just meh, honking at me and I'm looking at my half to get over. Otherwise I'm going to be stalled in the middle of the freeway. Oh my God. And so I just cut it off like <laughs> right before it just, you know, clips me Oh my! God. and I make it all the way over to the side. And so I'm on the side where it's like, you have a turn off and then there's the four lanes. And so it was like, I just got off enough to where, um, I mean, the cars that were coming, oncoming traffic was just barely skimming by me. So I'm like, just sitting there like this, just like shell shocked a little bit. Like, oh my God, you know, cars coming like every two seconds oh my God. and just waiting there until, I don't know, we could let the car rest a bit and see what the hell's going on. And, and then so, it just turned back on? Well, we waited and then it wouldn't come on. It wouldn't turn over, waited another like 20 minutes and then finally got it to turn over. And I, I was able to pull off the freeway, go down into this gas station and kind of wait for a tow truck. But 
I was just like, I'm, I'm just, I'm like here, dude, like stress. And like, I have this big party this weekend and like, have like, uh, this shoot like Thursday that I don't have the squat racks yet for the outside here. And I'm like, I, I'm like, I'm probably gonna have to end up installing it because I, I like the construction <laughs> no, guys no. probably won't be there. You know, I'm waiting on a delivery truck for that. So it doesn't stop. So the, like, so my dad then needs to get this car, uh, to, to get shit back. Um, I'm realizing I knowing like what's going on and everything else. I'm like, I just, I just don't feel like this is going to work out. Like Sunday is like crazy day of traffic. Everybody's going to be leaving at the same time. I'm like, I can't, I just can't dad. I can't like chance it, you know, that we're going to get the car in the morning. And so I, I ended up renting a car Saturday night and just took off and went home. And I was like, Oh, I'm home. I like, I made it. And thank God I did. So they, I'm like, I'm in back and forth with their dispatch. Like, where's the, where's the transport? Where is it? Uh, the guy's not responding. Like they're, they're like terrible. So U S transport, don't use them. I'm just going to tell you. Oh, no. uh, yeah. I'm going to put them plug. on blast. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So the guy's like not responsive. Finally, like middle of the day, he's like, oh yeah, I, I'm having trouble. Like my, my truck broke down and, and I'm like, what? I'm like, get another truck and I'm calling dispatch. You need to get another driver, you know, because this car needs to make it here. My dad had to pick somebody up from the airport today. And so he's got to come home. Turns out like he's unresponsive. And then uh, I'm yelling at the dispatch, like, Hey, you guys got to make this work. And, and they're like, okay, well we talked to him and he'll be there around nine or 11 o'clock at night. I'm like, Oh my God. I'm like, well, dad, I got an answer for it. It's not a great answer, but he's going to come at like nine, 10 o'clock. So he's waiting there. We're waiting there. Um, I'm not hearing from him. And I'm like, I'll, I'll try him again. My dad loses power at the trucky house. <laughs> There's no power. He's there by himself, you know, and he's like waiting for this truck. I'm calling. They're not responding. Then finally he responds. I, I call him like on his cell. And then he's like, oh, uh. I'm like, yeah, uh, they told me you're coming around nine or 11. He's like, oh, no, no. My truck broke down. Like, I don't have a truck. Like. <laughs> I get a truck tomorrow and then I can pick your car up around like four or five o'clock PM. Yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, dude, like unacceptable. And then, uh, so anyway, it's, they still haven't picked up his car. Wow. He's still there. Now, did they, did they comp anything they're doing with that? I don't know yet. I, I'm like, they're like, we're going to, you know, uh, you're going to have to talk to claims and blah, 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 blah. And so uh, I'm going to go through the rigmarole of all that and like chop some heads. That's, I just... I mean, it's I just, just had you guys heard me last week. I had such a bad experience with a, a company I did business oh, with. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I didn't even know what was happening, but I heard you on the other. I heard you. I was like, <laughs> yeah, Adam, you were yeah. not yeah, happy. You're, you're like, some, did you, know? you went all Karen, like hard, too. I, did. I, don't, yeah. I, did. I just I couldn't believe that someone was Give talking to me earful. like that. Yeah. Sales guy, sales guy was talking to me like that. And I'm so mad. I guess Katrina said, I. she goes, you, uh, I guess I was so mad, like all the staff, like everyone just got silent out there. No one said anything. And then I left. And then she said that they were, they were teasing me after I walked out. And thank God, of course they wouldn't do that. Cause I'd probably freak out if they said something to me afterwards. She's like, I guess I walked out the door and I don't know who it was Dylan, who said it was someone's just like, Google me, bitch. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, did you- <laughs> I, did you say that to the guy? I didn't, I didn't oh, say it like that, but I was talking to the CEO and I was just like really, uh, really upset at just this, the way the sales guy handled me in this whole process. And I'm just like, and you don't know who you're talking to on the other side of the phone. Like simple Google search, you probably figure out who the fuck you're talking no, to. You like, yeah, I did. I just said some shit like that, right? <laughs> I mean, wow. I'm, so, I'm so heated, right? Like just whatever is flying out of my mouth. But the part that I think I'm so mad about this whole thing, because the, the, the CEO got on with me and uh, one of the other managers, they were super apologetic. Then they tell me, too, that this behavior is not the first time from this guy. Like, it's, you know, it's something that they've dealt with. In fact, the guy said, you know, actually, personally, he's gone off on me before, and I don't know what his deal is and everything like that. And they're just like, so he's telling me all this information. you got a track record of this? Yes. <laughs> like, yes. Like, a track record on it. And I'm like, okay. He must be a closer. He is. He's got to be. A, he, he's made a comment. He you get away say, with shit like that in sales when you are the top dog. 100%. Uh, yeah. And they, and you know, he referred it's to him as, as the mercenary. You yeah. know, oh, yeah, we call him like the mercenary. <laughs> they, the, they have a nickname for him? Yes. <laughs> and I'm just like... So I'm over here and I'm going. You know what? Though? There's a pe- There's a part uh, of you. You got to admit, bro. There's a PC that kind of like, all right, bro. Like, this is how I am. 
hundred percent okay with it. Yeah. This, first of all, I would have fought the dude in person. If we, were, if someone talked to me like that person, I would, I would have whooped his ass. Disrespecting Hand, you, hundred yeah. percent. But oh, it was that bad. Huh? Yeah, it was that bad. Right. So that's. But also, same time, respect the sales game. Okay, respect that aggressive. I've always, I'd always said this. I'd rather have a sales guy that works for me that I have to pull back than the one I have to push and motivate. And that comes with this, the territory sometimes where these guys, not everybody's great at sales, right? Sometimes they're a little aggressive, pit bullish. And so, okay, when those mistakes happen, then what do you do? Now, this is the part I'm really upset at. I'm upset that these guys, and I'm obviously cutting a lot of the story out. Like part of what got here was that I made this big purchase that I wouldn't have done if I if I knew it wasn't going to be ready for car week. He basically week. made a promise that yeah he that, promised and then he me lied some, about it exactly even though it was in writing exactly so he exactly it was, was all email and writing yeah like, we no were, I didn't do that email each other back that. and forth yeah. he was denying what he said I had all the the proof that he did commit to me that this would happen I wouldn't have spent that extra five thousand dollars or six thousand dollars on on a part had it not been ready for car week like I wanted so anyways the part that I'm most upset now about is that. The two guys that get on the phone with me that are all apologetic, this and that. First of all, nothing. They're like, oh, we'll, we'll talk to him, right? So it's like we're gonna have a talking to him. Like, okay. And I think you said it best. It's gonna be like a fist bump. Like, oh, bro, you yeah. fucking got into wow. him. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey, like, chill calm, a little calm bit, bro. down next time. Good a job bit. with your yeah, sales. Yeah, great. Bro. Hey, great deal though. You know what I'm saying? That's a big riff. <laughs> yeah. you know like, but I, so I think that's how that went down. Next time. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just so disappointed that like you don't do something because and I don't ask. I didn't say. Give me this, expecting like that, but yeah. it's like good business in a situation like that. You just go. I tell you what, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and comp that for you and everything like that. We or apologize something. For, yeah, or just, something. Just make or good on throw in another yeah. part, or offer a service for free, or yeah. take his commission away and say, give me that discount. Be like, or even if he just says this, what can I do for you to make this right? Right. That, you know what's funny it, when you say that in customer service, more often than not, the person goes, you know what, just just it's fine. More often than not, more yeah. often than not, you don't get a crazy yes. ask. Yeah. So, I, I mean, what sucks too is like, I, I really liked the brand. So, Soul Exhaust Systems is the name of the company. And I'm pretty sure they're a smaller company out in Pennsylvania. I think they have some of the best sounding exhausts, but the customer service and the sales side of it, absolutely dog shit, dude. Mm -hmm. Unprofessional, even to the extent of once this all came out, that that was the way you came out about it. Like, why, how do you not do, do exactly that? You know, I'm the type of guy too. If you say like, what would you like us to do? Or what can we do for you? Or what can we give you? Or anything like that. You know what? It's okay. I understand what it's like to have a staff and a person do that can't control everybody. You guys were really friendly and nice. But it was just like, it was all just about uh, expediting it over to me. And I'm like, it's already too late. We already missed the time for it to get in. Have, to, you, ever, to, have you ever had a situation where you get really mad and you're like, I'm, that's it. They're going to get a terrible review. I'm going to complain, whatever. And then your paradigm just gets shift, shifted. Has that ever happened to you? I had one like that. Where I was about to leave a review and then it gets or shifted? Or something. Yeah, so I had- if, you, if, I'm, <laughs> if you got me so mad that I'm like on a phone call like well, that well, or me, I'm going to write a review, it's very Well, let me tell you what happened to me. It actually, me. it actually happened here. It's not, it wasn't a big purchase, it was DoorDash. <laughs> But this was like, this was maybe like a week, like a month ago. Sort of a comparison. Yeah. Right? No. Well, what I mean is, I <laughs> didn't get my food. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, you know I'm mad you're at twenty thousand dollars, six dollars. Yeah. You know what I'm like, saying? It's like a burger, dude. Well, no. So listen, I ordered, I ordered some food, and and it says it's on its way, it's on its way, it's on its way, it's not coming, not coming, not coming, not coming. The person's communicating. I'm on my way. Then they're not. Then they are. They're not. I'm tracking. I'm super pissed off. It's like literally. 90 minutes later, we're supposed to be here in 20 minutes. And I'm like, they're going to get a terrible, I never, I never leave stars, but I'm like, this person's going to one star. The person calls me or no, texts me. Hey, I'm trying to find parking, whatever. So finally I said, let me walk out of our, some our, our place is hard to find. So I'm like, let me walk out and I'll help you. So I walk out and it's this woman and she parked far away and she looks like she's like trying to find me and she's got two little kids with her. And she's walking over and I'm like, this woman's going to work with her kids in the car. And so I gave her a five-star review. Oh, uh, yeah. I felt so immediately uh, shifted uh, right away because I could see it on her face. I mean, maybe these guys would have had me shift at how they handled it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I think that I, I probably Oh, there's so yeah. many times you could turn that something like that into a positive. That's right. I mean, you you easily, like I said, I gave some suggestions. I mean, but they come over the top of that. I mean, I, already, I have a, a car that I have all their stuff on it. There's plenty of other things I could buy through them. We've got all these connections in that community. And it's like, to think like you just kind of go in above and beyond with me yeah, after I've yeah. had such a poor experience yeah. like that goes so far. But to not do that to me is just wild. Well, it wild. just sucks, dude. Like, 
I was like setting all this up so far in advance. It's like there was no error on my end, you know, and I just like had so many failures on everybody else's part leading up to this whole thing. And it's like, I, I, I try really hard not to create huge expectations about how everything's sure. going to trans, you know, transpire. But uh, it, that's where it, it, like it really gets me because I was like, it's a gift. It's like, this is a convenience. Like this is something that like enhances the experience and like it made nothing like ev everything just made it worse. Like, yeah. it, which, which was sucked, what are the, dude. what are the, what industries have the worst customer service reputations? I, I, I off the top of my head, I think like cable has oh, got to be up oh, there. Yeah. Air PG&E. Airplanes. Yeah, like stuff like that. But are there industries like? Can we look at look that up, Doug? Like, what industries typically have the worst customer service? I mean, because there's industries that notoriously, right? People are like, oh yeah, that's yeah, why. Right. That's why Comcast turned changed their name to Xfinity because they. Well, just, yeah, they because so there's they also had a monopoly, right? So yeah. it's, it's companies that have monopolies on things. That's right? what I'm saying. Like you that's have to thinking. like. Where they, they don't have a lot of competition. DMV. I, I would think <laughs> airlines would be up there. Yeah, I think airlines are, sure. are, can be that way too, like because there is only so many airlines that fly out of a certain place yeah. to another place. And Plus, so there's not much bit, you can do when you're you know delayed and yeah, stuff like that. So and they're just kind of like deal with it type of deal. Yeah, because there's not there isn't a lot of com competitive. What does it say there, Doug? Yeah, so there's five most hated industries by customer satisfaction. Let's hear it. Uh, internet service providers. Oh, right? I hit that yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Subscription TV service. Oh, that's the other one. Same Video on demand service. It's all the same. Gas stations. U.S. Postal Service. Oh, wow. These are all monopoly-ish type mm, industries yeah. where the, the gas station, where huh? regulations limit them. Yeah, gas, gas stations, stations is weird, though. That would depend, I think. I've never... What do they do? You do your own yeah. gas. Why would you complain? Well, well I impound or like car lot where you're picking up your car. Oh, you, that's the worst. Cars. But yeah. I mean, it's... You kind of expect that because of the the type of demographic they're dealing with on a daily basis yeah but not only the, they're predatory though dude. they are yeah very predatory yes. they they like literally set up deals with places and, and go patrol. hunt cars uh -huh. yeah I yes yeah. yeah no it that's i didn't even know about that till that had all happened to me when i had my car deal way back when and i was just like oh this is what these guys do like that's yeah. dirty <laughs> yeah, dude. Dude. i think mechanics i'd throw in there too like depending on you know who you know like unless you have a really good like mechanic with integrity, like they gouge everybody, no, dude. Really? Unless you know what what you know, like it's because you don't know, right? So they'll tell it. you something's wrong. You have no idea when it's something simple, but they can make yeah. It like expensive. my wife gives a totally different experience, I and mean, that's why she really? yeah she'll pull me in sometimes because it's like still huh? just oh yeah, dude. They're trying to hose her with all these extra charges. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> and then they're, they change their tune immediately. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I, I'd, I'd be what's, you know what's so funny about that is like in our relationship, Katrina's that person because she's going to nitpick every yeah. every part of the, the bill. Or you can take that. advantage of me or the mechanics. I don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah, that's how you, I can easily be you know, Whatever, make up a word. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. How uh, much is it? Yeah. <laughs> you know? No, totally. I don't know. Uh, totally. Crazy. Totally. Anyway, I was going to, um, I'm going to take a left here and talk about um, some studies I read on, on insulin sensitivity and cannabinoids. Do you guys remember a long time ago how I pulled up the those studies on cannabis users and how the average cannabis user is leaner than the non-user, which yeah, which, which didn't is, make oh, sense. Do, yeah, I do which is counter that. to what you would believe because of munchies and things yeah. like that. Yeah, like doesn't it make you eat more? Like what's the deal? Um, well, I, I, I've been looking up data on cannabinoids and how it affects insulin sensitivity and it's pretty reliable. Uh, improves insulin sensitivity, uh, which in the long term, theoretically, should help with fat loss or at least prevent fat gain um, because it helps with nutrient partitioning um, to the point where CBD um, and other cannabinoids, not THC, but other cannabinoids that are legal, are being researched uh, as potential diabetic drugs. Um, in fact, oh, there's wow. some in the pipeline. Yeah, hmm, pretty interesting. interesting. Yeah, pretty interesting stuff. So it makes me wonder if a supplement like NED would be a good thing to use with a high glycemic index meal to reduce its uh, its impact on blood sugar. That'd be interesting to test with one of those. I would, what, could we, I was going to say, say we just yeah. use something like that? I would love to have somebody who's using a CGM. You're not still using yours, are you? No. You were using yours for a while. Though. I would love to, have, to uh, any call, any listeners who use a CGM to use a product. So Ned is, I would, not just because we work with them. But their cannabinoid content is verified. Yeah. There's a lot of yeah, products it's potent, out there. It's actually legit. Yeah, they say they have this much CBD, this many cannabinoids, whatever, but you, you don't know. Like Ned's tested. I would love for somebody to let us know. Like, I use a CGM. Here's this meal without uh, Ned. Here's this meal with Ned. 
to see if there's a difference in blood sugar spiking. That's a great call. There's got to be somebody who's a listener that has both. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. I'd love to see that. So what are so, the so okay? Cool. Since you're putting it out there, uh, and you're we're definitely gonna get response when we do that stuff like this. Uh, what are the ways to set it up to make it as controlled as possible? Same type of food, same meal, same, same time, type of day, same time, same activity. Yeah, so yeah. you're not like I didn't just work out before. Or right. Like that. So you want to try and make yeah. sure uh -huh. as, control as many variables as you and can. And I would take Ned uh, thirty to forty minutes before the meal to make sure the cannabinoids uh, are are being are being Maybe utilized even longer. Um, no, I would say thirty to forty because then by the food the time the food digested. You know, you'd probably be okay. Okay. The other thing too would be just to use Ned and just see what your numbers trend like uh, throughout the week. Hmm. So now that I'm using Ned, have you noticed the difference in your now? Would you uh, would you take Ned first, then eat the meal? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. And eat the meal. How much further after? So that's like I said, thirty to forty. Oh, minutes. so thirty to forty minutes. Take the Ned, then eat. Yes. And then you're probably waiting yeah. for the actual readings yes. are going to come yes. out. Okay. Or or just use it and then compare it to your previous weeks. If not not a lot has changed. The only thing with that is that there's when you talk a lot about, of things can affect. Yeah. That. The more like yeah. you'd be better off trying to to gauge it on like a meal, like a dinner, right? And just mm -hmm. say a dinner. I haven't had this meal at this time. Mm -hmm. And then compare basically, uh, you know, from that hour mm -hmm. on for the mm -hmm. rest of the day. So you have because the more very the more things you add in there, day stress, mm -hmm. work, uh, you know, exercise, everything like that. Now you're going to make that change. But you know, bit. insulin sensitivity. I mean, it's it's of course calories matter first. You don't want to overeat because uh, it doesn't matter. You're going to gain body fat. But insulin sensitivity in the long term does play a role in fat storage, muscle gain, mood, appetite, all those things. So it's not something you don't want to, you know, to ignore. Definitely take a look at it, manage it because it affects uh, so many things, including behaviors. Yeah. You know, so it's just one of those things. And then speaking of, of partners, I went on Eight Sleeps website website to l learn more about how their their you know cooling and warming system, um, how the AI works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it measures your breathing, and it measures your heart rate, and then based off of that data. It can then individualize the temperature of bed throughout the night. So as, sick. So it can predict. It knows like so sick. you're this stage sleep, this stage sleep. At this time, you typically do this. At this time, you typically do that. And then it moves it through. And then you know what claim they make on their website? I don't yeah. know if they they must have some data to support this, but it says on there that you'll sleep up to an hour more huh. by using their their system. Oh wow. wow. So have you guys ever looked at? So I know what my mine is. It's uh, the the bed goes from minus seven, minus two, zero. So that's the, the that's from the beginning to oh, yeah yeah. So like a, yeah the yeah, the different. So like at uh, minus seven all the way till I want to say like midnight or so, midnight yeah. or one, and then it drops me down to or brings me up, I should say, mm -hmm. in temperature to minus two, and then towards the middle of the night to the morning time, it goes to zero. So I thought that was kind of cool and interesting how it does that because back in the days before we had eight sleep, you, the other one we had to manually control mm -hmm. and it was just that temperature yeah. all night, all whatever throughout. it is. Yeah. Where it's cr it's interesting to see that that's a big difference. Minus seven all Do the way. You find to yourself zero. waking up easier because of that because that's it's warming up because it's waking your body up. Right? You the sleep on your back. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I sleep on my back. What uh, you know? What's interesting about the breathing? I wonder. So. Do you do longer, bigger like breaths when you're in deep sleep, or is it so. like short? Yeah, like I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'm the curious I about think that. So, yeah. but I have no idea. Hmm. I'm wondering if the first phase of sleep is the longer breaths because uh, How? I notice this about my kids or whatever when when they're trying to fall asleep and then you hear them. Yeah, yeah, big yeah, long breaths. Slow down. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Now you were on a kick for a while there with the sleep apnea machine. Now you no. you, you haven't used that in a long time. No, man, it's because. It helps, but oh, it's so cumbersome and it's such a pain. Yeah, you're probably not getting laid when you put that thing on. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, when, once I'm going to sleep, it's going to have a Vader mask. It's dude. not happening anyway. Uh, but <laughs> no, and so I stopped. Are you that? Do you have to like plan sex well before like bedtime? Bedtime? Um, it doesn't I mean, happen. We don't go to sleep and then wake up and have sex. That was the first year. Mm. After the first year, it's like yeah, it doesn't I, happen. I don't, I don't get woken up with sex <laughs> anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at that point where I get annoyed. It's like, you know, I don't know. You know, that, <laughs> like I'm sleeping. I might get annoyed, but probably not. You know, I might start mm. off getting annoyed and be like, well, actually. Yeah. Um, no, that doesn't that doesn't happen anymore. Sleep is so hard for us anyway. No, I use something that I'll, I'll use something that pulls my lower jaw forward. <clears throat> I'll use mouth tape. I'll do, you know, both of those at the same time. But it's my body weight. My body weight. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, have I've been to telling keep, you, I've been telling you that about me. It's been interesting. I have to keep my body weight closer to 210. 
It, once it gets up to 215-ish, then the snoring happens. And it doesn't matter. I'll sleep on my side. You know what I what Nothing I have happened. found, even because you and I have talked about this before, you could probably go back and hear you and I speculate about where our body likes our weight. And I had convinced myself that's 210, 215, because I like myself still at 210, 215. <laughs> and the reality is like the the lower I'm getting, you the know, like, you yeah, the better I I'm know. feeling. And it's just like, well, maybe that's still me wanting to be about 210, 215, but my body seems to be more like the most, 195 to really? 200. Is so, what, yeah. so the most athletic that I ever was, was when I was heavy into jujitsu. I was training four days a week, lifting once. And my body weight was about one, I want to say 185. Yeah. Uh, was about right for me. Yeah, yeah. And I just felt fast and mobile. Which and to me, that makes sense because of our, a little bit of our, our height, height difference. difference. Yeah. I'm, I'm about That's what I weighed in, as a senior in high school, 185. Yeah. 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 Really? Yeah. What's yeah. a comfortable weight for you? <laughs> 270 to. <no. laughs> That's the real comfy. Yeah, that's too comfy. No, no. Uh, you're pretty comfortable. I'm fine. You feel good. Two thirty. Like I, I, I could probably do two fifteen. I think that would be, I would be more lean and and still. Strong. Where were you when you got uh, lean for the show? Remember when we did the the whole thing? I was about two ten. So you think you were a little lighter? I was a little. Light. I didn't like it. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like a little. Now again, is that kind of is that bitch. you? <laughs> is, yeah, now is that you saying that like we are too, or it's yeah. just like yeah? Because it's, it's an like, ego thing. Like, yeah. More, yeah. I felt, I felt good, but yeah, it was more like I just felt like what, a little kid. Well, when you were your most athletic playing football, but first off, you were what light? What position were you? Yeah. Well, I mean. When what? I was in high school, I played more outside linebacker and in some safety. So, so you're moving. Yeah, I was moving. And then in college is where I had to really kind of pack on more weight because I was inside. And I, and I was going against all these, like, huge guards and So tackles. when you were outside linebacker safety and you were feeling pretty athletic, what was your body weight? Yeah, so I was, like, I ranged from, like I said, 185 up to 205. Oh, yeah. 205 was like, yeah. So maybe like two hundred five is actually probably. probably. I had, <laughs> I had, I had, I had dinner with my my brother and my sister over the weekend, mm -hmm. and my brother he's just he's a just a bigger version of me. He's just the kid holds. I say kid, he's a grown man, but he's my younger brother, so whatever. He just holds so much lean body mass; it's it's ridiculous. It makes yeah. me angry. Yeah, because we were talking. I'm not. I was teasing. We were you know going back and forth about working out, and like I said, just my my brother could go to the gym. He could walk in, not work out, work out three or four times and put up 315 on the bench or whatever. just a horse. And we were talking about his body weight. So I'm not going to say it on the podcast. He'll get mad, but he <laughs> probably has more lean body mass than I do. And he doesn't, and he lifts weights here and there. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, I'm like a four cylinder. This is what he says to me. This is what, this is his quote. He goes, you're like a four cylinder with four turbos. With the you know the air intake and exhaust and everything, like blow a, a valve. He's like a V ten, yeah. yeah, naturally yeah. aspirated. Doesn't need any. Doesn't need any turbos or he's anything. Like with like nitrous. He's yeah, like yeah. you're trying as hard as you can. can't. Yeah, you know, like yeah. scream, man. Yeah, that's funny. You know what I mean? But anyway. that would make him in the car world. He's the Lamborghini, and you're like the the Ferrari right now. That's what it is. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because the Ferraris are like they have all the Ferrari, the big Ferraris now are like twin turbos and stuff like that. Oh, and Lambos are Lambos like, are all naturally aspirated all the way up to the oh, yeah, you told to me the V twelve. Yeah, so they're not V10 the and V12. not the SUV. Yeah, not the SUV. SUV's twin yeah, turbo. I don't really count that as a, like a real, real. Is it sports, Audi? Yeah, it's like a. Yeah, I mean that's like a. I mean that that's different, right? I'm thinking of like cars. Like that's a that's not considered a car. It's an SUV. That's a utility vehicle. Yeah. But on the car side, so your Aventador and your Huracan, those are all. That's a V10 and a V12 naturally aspirated. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then the Ferraris would be a V8 twin turbo. Are they are are, La are Lamborghinis harder to get them to than Ferraris? No, opposite. Ferraris are Lamb to get. Lambos are easier. Easier, sorry, that's and more popular. Yeah, they're, they're easier to get. Yeah, well, I mean, the model like a Huracan is really easy to find. That's like the that's like the most popular Lamborghini that you see. What does that cost? It's uh, still a three hundred thousand dollar car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're not still, that easy to get. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I didn't mean like availability yeah, wise. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, of course, any of those are ex expensive, hard to get in that sense, but um, more available. You would see there's they made more Hercon. I mean, that's how yeah. part of what makes those cars valuable is the scarcity of them, right? Yeah. How, how limited the the runs are on them, and then uh, I mean, you could probably look this up: Lamborghini Huracan, How many how many were built or made, and then you can compare it to like. The, I had a uh, I had a buddy, and when I was in my twenties, I want to say twenties. He had that older generation Skyline, but apparently you could tune those to hell. And yeah. he had tuned it to a thousand horsepower. But yeah. this was in the, this was probably in the early 2000s. <clears throat> and that was the fastest I'd ever been in a car. He took me 185 miles an hour on a freeway. Yeah. In a, in a Skyline. Yeah. That's in an early 2000. Are you yeah. kidding me, bro? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was terrifying. Yeah, it was right. like, you know, and you're, you know, when you're in a guy and your buddy's driving fast. 
you don't you start wanna, to get you don't want to act like that, but you are. You don't say anything yeah. until you start to get past the point of like, well, now I'm going to get mad, yeah. and I almost did. You're not in control or anything at that. You know, it, it didn't feel like it either. 185 in that car. Well, there's a, yeah, there's a difference between being in a car too that was designed to go a speed and yeah. a, yes. a car that was built. To, oh no, like, someone built it up to go that speed. Oh, no. There's a big difference. No, no, no. Big big difference. Never 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 ever again got in a car with him. Ever again? Oh, I wouldn't either. Because <laughs> that, that, that would scare the shit. That's scary on a freeway, yeah, dude. That's yeah. scary. I mean, I remember even Dangerous. doing. I remember in my little Acura Integra that I had all you know, all beefed up that I could get like 100, 100, 130 miles an hour, and it felt like. I mean, you don't even feel like the t wheels. What was are, the horsepower back in those? Because those cars were so like two hundred something. Horsepower. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, all like souped two, up 200 yeah. 220 yeah, well, yeah that was what i was thinking the whole time when i was looking at all these like old cars like it, it's there was one that was cool because it had like the hellcat engine i kind of showed yeah. you, yeah, yeah, you yeah, that yeah. like and that's cool it's cool and they do like the um the frame where they take like a new car and they place it on top of, of mm. the frame so you get the shocks and the, the yeah. power steering and all that but like old cars like, it's scary to, to go fast yes like it that. is and then yeah. they'll push like they'll, they'll put all these like like fully blown engines in there and it's just like you, you, you can't even put that kind of horsepower down no. it's just it's wasted but it's it's cool but it also it's like you're not gonna go it's top completely speed. different yeah yeah completely different no that's the argument for some of these that are like that that even like the hellcats and stuff that are like a thousand horsepower it's like you're just, yeah. just spinning them out it's yeah. great for burnouts yeah, yeah yeah cool for cool for that but as far as yeah. usable performance not really cool. yeah. we have a shout out for today I know I don't have to shout out. Let's shout out our uh, our new personal trainer page. So it's free. It's a free Facebook forum on there. It's personal trainer growth secrets. So oh, per yeah. personal trainer growth secrets powered by Mind Pump. Anne's in there managing with all the rest of us, putting out daily free content. So if you're not uh, there or our our trainer page on Instagram, so those two free resources uh, for all personal trainers. Make sure you're checking those out. Cold water immersion, cold therapy is known and proven to reduce cortisol, reduce uh, inflammation, boost catecholamine production like norepinephrine, orpinephrine. That means you feel good, you feel energized. It can, in some cases, even raise testosterone. Nonetheless, it's one of the best ways to energize your body without having to take a chemical stimulant like caffeine. Go check out this company called Plunge. They make the best ice dips you'll get anywhere ice baths you this one cleans itself you don't have to keep refilling it with water it looks nice it keeps the temperature really cold it's amazing go check it out go to plunge.com use the code mind pump get 150 dollars off all right back to the show our first caller is steph from british columbia hi steph how you doing steph how can we help you oh, i'm so stoked to meet you um and yeah um i have a question kind of regarding so i have done some testing with my naturopath recently and I have low cortisol levels, um, which kind of makes sense with a bunch of symptoms that I've been having. Um, so I'll just kind of read what I wrote. Um, so I've been super exhausted, can't sleep enough. You do nine hours of sleep and a nap in the day. I've been groggy in the morning and then weak in the gym, but there's kind of a background before that. Um, I competed in a bodybuilding show in May. So I started prep for that in January. And in prep for that, we tested my cortisol levels. And at that time they were too high. And so I worked with a naturopath to support me through that stress that I was having on my body. And we were able to have good sleep patterns through prep and all of that. Um, and then 10 days before my show, my mother passed away. Um, she wanted me to do the show. And so I kind of, I kept going and kind of ran on adrenaline and I won the show. Um, and then kind of the come down from that and then the shock of my loss, I, I just kind of kept going and I grabbed onto my reverse diet. And so I did that um, about six weeks. Um, we got my food up pretty high, pretty minimal fat gain. Um, and then I was back to training four to five days a week with no cardio. Um, then fast forward to the last couple weeks, um, two and a half months post show and I got went and did cortisol testing a month after that after show and it said that my levels were way too low now like basically had flatlined um so my naturopath has changed some supplementation to kind of support that but i'm just kind of wondering what i could do to to kind of get those back to normal great question stuff yeah, yeah, what you're yeah. experiencing or what you experienced is uh they used oh. to call us adrenal fatigue and there's stages to it. Um, they don't call it adrenal fatigue anymore, but the symptoms 
um, are kind of what you're explaining. And they tend to, what tends to happen, not always, but what tends to happen is cortisol goes real high first. And then through that repeated exposure, the next stage uh, is where the cortisol crashes. So it starts to go up at first because your body is like, we need more cortisol. We need more cortisol. We need more cortisol. Then when your body can't do anymore, and this is why they called it adrenal fatigue. That's not really what's happening, but they called it adrenal fatigue because the symptoms then look like low or no cortisol, which is crushing and like no energy. It's lethargy. It's, uh, I, I can't sleep enough. I don't have the energy, uh, to function. And if you keep going down this path where you're pushing yourself, uh, by the way, all of this pushing yourself too much is always in the context of the individual. Okay. So four or five days a week of strength training with no cardio may be appropriate for most people with your level of experience with exercise. But right now it's not appropriate for you. It's too much. It's it's just too much. In fact, most of what you're going to do right now is too much. Mm -hmm. um, and what happens with the body is the body will keep trying to keep you alive as long as it can. But the signs and the signals and the, 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 the signs that your body is telling you to slow down, start out as a whisper, then your body talks to you, then your body screams at you, and then you shut down completely. And I've seen this. I've seen what happens when someone goes beyond where you're at and what it looks like is really bad chronic uh, health issues like hair falling out, fat gain, um, and it could take a long time to recover from. Now, I'm going to ask you a question that's maybe a bit more personal, which is um, how do you feel when you stop? Or, or how do you feel when you slow down and you're quiet and nothing's happening? You're not chasing something. Is that scary for you? What does that feel like? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like even, so it was my coach who's like, you need, let's just take two weeks off. She removed all my programming from my app and everything and was like, go do something else. Just like find something else to do. Um, for sure. Just like lost. Cause it's something that I grab onto, especially when I'm dealing with hard stuff, right? Like it's like, I love going to the gym and I want to be there. Um, so yeah, it's, it's super tough for me yeah. <laughs> this last week of not working out. It's been really hard, but it's, I'm feeling a lot better. Yeah. I know Steph, Steph I, I want to give you a little, uh, personal stuff that's going on in my life right now with my wife. So <clears throat> just to, to give you a little idea of then, even though you guys have different things going on, similar in how the body is, is, is talking to you and her, so she went, I don't know if you know, but she went like septic yeah. two months ago. That was really scary for us and everything like that. And here we are uh, almost two months later and uh, she still can't even work out one time a week. Right. And she's really, I mean, she breaks down probably once every other week or so emotionally because she'll have these days where like five, six days in a row go good. And she's like, she's feeling really good. And then she thinks she's better and back to normal. And then she has a really busy day. And I'm not, we're not even talking about working out. It's just, she has to even manage uh, her stress level from work, her activity with my son, cleaning house, stuff like that. And she has to learn to really listen to how her body's feeling and, you know, go, okay, I've already been going quite a bit today. Even though I feel fine, I'm going to take a break for two hours and just put my feet up on the couch and relax and do something she would never do, which is watch TV or something. <laughs> and so it is just, it is, it's so hard for me to watch her go through this uh, and, and, and tr be so out of character for her to not just power through it because she's got that D1 college athlete personality of like, I'll muscle through this and I'll, I'll be tough and I'll, and her body keeps reminding her and she keeps having these setbacks and I keep telling her, so the doctor is like, you know, I know you think you're better, but you're not. And you got to, you got to just rest a little bit longer. And when you start feeling a little better, that doesn't mean green light to go back after and get after it. You've got to continue to do that and ease yourself back in. Your body's going through something very similar where mm -hmm. even though you might have a day or two where you feel good, that's not green light for you to go get after it at the gym. It just means like, okay, it, your body's starting to recover. And what we're doing when we go in and you start to push again is you set yourself right back. And so very yeah. similarly, and I, I, and I get uh, how emotional and challenging that can be, especially coming from someone like you who's disciplined themselves to reach the levels you have. Um, but you, like rest is going to be what you, you really need right now more than probably what you're ever been used to. Yeah. H how deep do you want to get into this stuff? What do you mean? <laughs> well, <Let's go. laughs> so, so, um, if you don't want to sit still and you don't want to be, um, quiet or, uh, still is the best word. 
there's something you're running from. Either it's a feeling or you don't want to go through whatever's required, whatever your body and mind need you to go through. And so you run. And one of the best ways or most effective ways of running is to stay busy. This is um, very common. This is me. It's what I do. If I'm yeah. stressed, I, I run. And the way I run is I do stuff. I do stuff. And it's productive stuff. So it's easy for me to look at it and, and say, it. this is, well, this is good. I'm, I'm doing things that are good. It's not like I'm running by doing drugs. I'm running by working out and working more and all that stuff. Yeah. So there's something or things that you're running from. <clears throat> now, the only way th to get through this is to literally, you got to get through it because it's there. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you patch it up with, supplements and or hormones and or whatever, it's going to come back again and it's going to come back in more challenging ways uh, to manage and handle. And maybe in t during times when you don't have as much uh, opportunity to, to rest and take a break. Like I'm, I'm looking at you right now, you're very fit. You'd be totally fine taking 30 days or 60 days or six months off. Right. You'd be yeah. fine. Now imagine 10 years from now, imagine if you kick the can down the road and you take, start going on hormone therapy, which is what people tend to do. Oh, I feel low energy. My testosterone crash, my estrogen, whatever. Then they start, you know, supplementing with hormones and then you feel better. Oh, I feel good. I'm going to keep going. And then 10 years later, you've got all these other responsibilities and then your body's like, that's not working anymore. And then you're like, uh, what do I do now? Like I, I have nowhere to turn. So the answer to, to to hammered cortisol levels, especially in the concept we're talking about, the context that we're talking about, is to not work out. It's not to have a workout that's easier. It's to not work out. So what you're gonna, what you, if you really want to get through this and do it in the way that's most effective, is you're not going to do any workouts. You can stay active. You can walk. Yeah, walking. You can yeah. be outside. <clears throat> I like Yin Yoga meditative type movement, but there's no strength training. There's not going to be any cardio that makes you out of breath or sweat. There's no super physically or even moderately physically challenging exercise until these numbers get back. Now, I'm hopeful, very hopeful because you look young and because of your experience exercise uh, with exercise and also because you're working with a naturopath that you're probably going to bounce back in a relatively short period of time. Okay. I've worked with people where this could take us six months. I worked with a lady. It took six months, but she was a lot older than you didn't have your background in exercise. And she had been running on low cortisol for God knows how long. I, I don't think this will take longer than 30, a, few, a few weeks or 30 days yeah. or 60 days at the most. Uh, now just to forecast, this is something that we found that was effective as coaches and trainers. Whenever I train somebody, I like to tell them what they're going to experience. So you're not surprised it's going to get harder. So you're not going to work out and that's going to be really hard for you because you're going to get a lot of emotion and it might look like anger. It might look like tears. It might look like anxiety. Yeah, I can't irritability. I, I don't know what to do with myself. Ah, you know, like whatever you might want to, uh, run with food or something else, fight that urge. But I, I think you need to not work out. And I think your activity is fine. I think you should walk. Yin yoga is great. Although for someone like you, that's going to probably feel torturous. Uh, yin yoga for me was torture. Yeah, but it was so beneficial when, uh, looking back. But yeah, I think you need to take a lot of time. I think you need to take complete time off. In fact, I would tell your naturopath, hey, uh, I think I can do this. can be real hard, but I'm going to just stop working out. And I would like for you to test me um, uh, you know, periodically so that I can start to see when things balance out and then ease back in. Then what you're going to do is when you're ready and, and your naturopath is like, wow, things are looking kind of good. Then you ease back in. So you don't go back to four or five days a week. You go back two days a week and, and mod, then, way low and you, and you wait yeah. and then you test again and then you go back up to three days a week and then you test again would be the ideal way to do it. And, and now to just to ease your fears about, you know, your, your body, whatever strength or muscle you lose, you'll gain back so fast. You'll surprise, you'll shock yourself and then you'll go beyond where you are because things will be where they're supposed to be. Then you're going to surpass anything you've ever done and be like, Oh my God, I feel like a superhuman superhero, but you're gonna have to take some time off. When, when you see cortisol that's plummeted in, in the floor, it's time off. You got to take time off. Otherwise it's going to take forever to get you back to normal. Okay.
Yeah. So what does training look like when I do go back to it? Obviously, that's what I'm thinking. About. It, it looks like hardly anything. I'm going to send you like I'll send you Maps 15, 15 yep. the beginner Maps 15, like really, really easy. So oh. more forecasting for you. Uh, you you will this. I mean, this is what Katrina has done like already multiple times is like you all of a sudden you have like five, six, seven days in a row where you, you feel really good. And she convinces herself she feels really good. And then she goes to do something that's not even that hard and difficult and gets set back another week or two. So when you do go back in there, you can only go too hard. You can't go too easy. You're going from zero, not doing anything, taking weeks or a month off. So when you like one exercise would be okay. Your body weight movements would be okay. What you can make as a mistake is going, oh, I'm going to do my normal routine and just be half the weight I normally do. No, 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 no. That could be a mistake. You cannot do too little in this situation. So whatever your workout decide you decided to be, it would probably be something like MAPS 15, even at a very moderate intensity yeah. and slowly scale. Yeah, because otherwise what will happen is you'll you'll be like, oh my God, I'm good. And your, your, your labs will look normal. And then you'll overdo it and you'll set yourself back weeks uh, so uh, now again to make it just to just to make you feel better if you do this right your 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 body is going to respond so well it's going to trip you out and now the challenge with this is going to be when it starts to respond and you'll see it in the mirror you'll be like holy cow like what is going on i'm barely doing anything it's going to motivate you My, to want to you're going to want to go for it <laughs> yep. so you got to fight that urge you're going to want to go for it cuz that muscle memory is a real thing and training when you're healthy is very different than training when you're running on fumes. You're going to feel superhuman. So fight the urge to go crazy. Just kind of, so I'll send you maps 15, do the, the, the original version of it. I would do that for three or four weeks, then do the advanced version for the three or four weeks, and then do something like a maps anabolic type of program. And then after that, you're probably okay to start to get back to what you're used to. Just be mindful. Are you in our forum, Steph? No, I'm not. Okay, I'm going to have Doug put you in there too, okay? Yeah, so, that would be sweet. Yeah, and then just um, check in with us, all right? And then, like, nutritionally, just kind of keep... Your nature path is probably going to be the best to be yeah. talking to yep. you about that. Yep. Your nature path is going to be able to tell don't, you. Don't go on a cut. Fed, yeah, yeah, uh, definitely not. Don't okay. go on a cut. Don't uh, eat, eat to be healthy. Eat to yeah. be healthy. Eat to feel good. Nourish yourself. The yeah. number one thing I would look at with diet is your digest digestion. Your digestion will tell you a lot about if your diet's on the right path. So if your digestion's good, you don't feel blow, you've got regular bowel movements, there's no constipation, you know, et cetera. It's like, boom, we're on, we're on point. We're on track. Just don't push yeah. anything, essentially. But I'm going to tell you right now, listen, okay, I'm going to say this again because I know I got to sell this. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> you are going, I'm telling you right now, it's like, let, let me ask you this because I'm sure this will resonate for you. Can you do anything for 30 days? Yeah, I mean, I just did for four months, Okay, right? you got the mental <laughs> fortitude to do anything for 30 days. Can you do anything for 60 days? Yeah. Okay, so this is a challenge. Look at it like that. Like, I can fucking do this for 30 days. I can do this for 60 days. When you come out of it, you're going to, whatever, however your body responded before, however good you thought you were, you're going to crush that. So think of it that way. That's the truth. Cool. I'll have to chat with my coach. Actually, if I could give her a shout out, she's a huge fan. That's actually how I found you guys. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Great. Great. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Give her a name. What's Anna her name? Anna Morish and Team DIY Body. So yeah, I've been listening to you guys for the last two years because of them. So awesome. thank you. Awesome. 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 Stay in touch with us. So Please. We're going to put you in the forum. Just check in with us every couple of weeks. Okay. Okay. Thank right. you so much. Thanks, All right, Steph. Steph. You got this. Okay. I hope she does what we said. I've worked with people. Uh, I mean, Katrina's going through this right now. Listen, her her body going septic is like yeah. that. Like it's just yes. very, very similar yes. of, of this. And in the thing that Katrina continues to be challenged with is like, so we had like, she, again, we've been through this so many times now in the last two months. She had uh she's like, she finally was like listening. She was doing what I said, where I'd be like, listen, hon, even if uh, you feel good, if you notice that you're just busy for like three hours straight, be mindful of that and take a break, even if you feel good. It's so different than you, what she's used yeah, to. Yeah, so it's so hard. And she did that, right? And she's like, oh my God, hon. She's like, this is the first time in seven days in a row I've strung together a feeling really, really good. Well, we go to the lake that weekend and uh, all, we're just laying around a boat. She's not doing anything really physically, but the lake house is like four stories and she had to go up and down oh, the, the stairs, stairs yeah. a handful of times. Yeah. And I noticed that, I mean, it was enough stairs that I, I was like, man, there's a lot of stairs. I'm, I'm yeah. a little winded. And uh, right away it triggered me. I'm like, God damn, I hope uh. she's, and sure as shit, set her back a day or two. And so it's like, it, that's how 
like how minimal and how careful you have to be when your body has gone through something that that traumatic that hard and it's tough for someone like the like her and like Katrina to, to the, the problem with the, the biggest challenge with this is you compare yourself to how you yep. you thought you used to be yep. or even worse to other people you'd be like my god I'm working out one day a week and I feel smashed, you know, and, but I know this person over there that could do twice as much and I'm fitter than them. Mm -hmm. What the hell's going on? That's a trap. That is a trap. Don't fall. You have to listen uh, to your own body. But like I said, I've worked with several people with this exact profile uh, where you get the high cortisol, then you get the smash. Cord. By the way, what follows that is not good. What yeah. follows that is like, you got to take six months off. Mm -hmm. We actually had a lady that took six months of no exercise off and then started out with, like, like how you would train an 80 year old. Yeah. And then eventually after a year, she was back to normal. Mm. Uh, but had she not done that, it would have been nasty. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Our next caller is Matt from Florida. Matt, what's up, man? What's going on? What's dude? happening, dude? Hey, guys. I'm happy to be back on. I have a fairly straightforward question today. And then I got blood work back, like the results back today. So I have a follow up question relating to the question I originally asked. So I'm just going to read off the email before I wander off. So I said, hey, guys, hope you're doing well. Matt from Florida. Um, I've been cutting for about two months now and lately I've been trouble falling asleep. I don't eat right before bed. I wind down well most nights, block blue light, supplement accordingly, and still toss and turn. Is this calorie deficit playing a role? And I've never really had trouble with this until I started cutting. Okay. So. And then would you mind telling me what your labs say? Yeah. So I got labs back in May and hold on, I wrote down, where is it? So my testosterone went from 753 to 630 something, 632. Um, my LDL dropped by 40. My HDL went down by nine. Triglycerides went up by eight. A1C went down 0.2%. That's why I originally started cutting because my A1C was 5.8. And I was like, I'm too health focused to be pre-diabetic right now. And my fasting insulin was around four. So Okay. No, those, yeah, those aren't nothing alarming about those numbers. How um, much of a cut did you go on? What's the cut look like? <clears throat> um, so I was 205 and all I do, cause I follow like a Paul Saladino based diet, like animal based, like high quality protein, um, fruit, um, healthy fats. So I pretty much, all I did was cut out the cooking with the butter and I switched to an avocado oil spray just to save, I don't know, 250 calories per day. And all I've mm. done other than that is increase my steps just hit 10,000, at least 10,000 steps every day and really just eat till I'm satiated and not just like wander and snack and all that. And I track all my, I only track protein. I hit 200 grams a day and I um, track the micronutrients to make sure I'm getting all that. But I've only cut down, I've cut down from 205 and now I'm like 191, 192. Interesting. Why, why? I mean, I think I know why. Oh, I think yeah. it's those weird posters behind you that keep you up at night. <laughs> what do you mean weird? <laughs> nah, nah, hold, on, hold on, those yeah. are there since yeah. I was like 14. Yeah, yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, now. What about, Matt, I'm joking. Listen, do you, do you have anything going on? Like as far, did you make a shift in work or anything like a move or anything new that's going on? Nah. Not really. All I've been, I'm a pre-med student, so I've been studying for the MCAT. Wow. So that's really it. Well, um, but it's not like I study for like two hour, two to three hours a day. So no. it's not like I know I'm not happening. even taking classes yeah. right now. So I, I know what's that. Why'd you go on an animal based diet? Um, it just seemed I've been doing it for two years now. So it's yeah. not, um, that's why, I find it really that's why your A1C me. went up, by the way. You think so? I know so. So, so it's, it is, here's the deal. You go on an animal based, very low carbohydrate. Initially you'll see insulin sensitivity improve, but over time without, you know, eating carbohydrate, what you tend to see is insulin sensitivity get worse. This is why all the, the keto godfathers now even say having, you know, a day or two of carbohydrates is probably a good thing. It's also why Saladino, by the way, I love him. He's a friend of ours. I don't want to interrupt you, yeah. um, but I'm going to anyways, just to make clear um the animal base does um emphasize having carbohydrates so i probably eat around 150 grams um of carbohydrates from fruit sweet potato honey yeah. milk so yeah. it's not like low carb by any means it's just not i used to be eating like 400 grams of carbs a day and that just seemed yeah weird. i would eat i would i would change it around and eat more i would eat some more carbohydrates i would switch your macros around uh maybe go up to two, 250 have a nice carb meal before bed i know they're like oh, i don't do that uh, but then watch what happens uh, with your sleep. Um, I think. And how often do you lift weights? 
I do like a massive team type of thing. Okay. So like yeah. Monday through Friday, and then I play baseball for a few hours on Saturday. Yeah, bump your carbs, bump your carbs, and if you want to keep your calories the same, change everything else. Add some, you know, add add some more, and see how you feel. You'll probably notice your sleep improve. Now, I would combine that typically with a reduction in um, in activity, but I would say on top of bumping your carbs, um, you're probably better off bumping your calories as well. And then see what happens. I've, I've seen a lot of, uh, of situations like yours where people go from higher carb to lower carb, feels good for a while. Then they start to have issues with overtraining or it's almost like um, symptoms of too much stress or too much cortisol or whatever. I, I mean, I went through this I, same thing. I went through the same experience. And I've trained enough people to know that um, oftentimes what tends to happen is we, we need to bump your carbs, probably your calories too, and then they start to feel a little better. Um, so I would bump them up and, you know, hundred carbs a day or 140, it's not, you know, below 50, like a keto diet, but for a lot of people prolonged, you know, hundred and something grams of carbs a day for, for a lot of people, not all people, but for a lot of people, at least some people, especially if they're active, it starts to become too little. Yeah, they, you said, they start to get a stress response. You said you're doing 10,000 plus steps a day. Yeah. I mean, some days it's honestly been closer to like 14, 15. Okay. Yeah. That's a lot, um, that's a lot like of moving. Naturally. That's a lot yeah. of moving. That's a lot of moving. And, uh, yeah. And, and like the main concern I have, to be honest, is like with the blood work, cause I track my sleep too. I'm like a freak with this stuff. So my resting heart rate has been improving. My HRV has been improving as well. But then I get these blood um, results back and like sure the LDL dropped, which is great, but like the HDL went down and the triglycerides went up and, yeah. and the testosterone dropped pretty substantially. So I was like, damn, do I keep cutting? Cause I, the reason I started cutting was to improve those health markers. And now it's like, they're starting to head in the not ideal direction. So I'm like, do I need to drop like five more pounds? Like I'm not hungry. You're not bad. Like, you're, you're not bad though either, bro. You're not like that. So <clears throat> also something to keep in mind too, Doug was this way. Um, he, tracking uh, diligently and everything like that. His sleep was stressing him was out. stressing him out and <laughs> fucking his sleep up. So yeah. no, I'm serious. Like sometimes, like you, I mean, we think we're doing all these good things, but you are overthinking it. Some, and, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying this is you, but right. I mean, he had to get rid of like his his aura ring and stuff because that was a, a, a problem he had. Was he was so competitive with his score that he was stressing himself out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, my quali the quality of my sleep, once I fall asleep, it's fine. Like, I'm getting the an hour and a half of slow wave sleep and the two hours of REM. It's just like sitting in bed, tossing and turning for an hour. It's like really hmm. annoying. Hmm. Yeah. And um, how's your stimulant use, like caffeine hmm. or pre-workout? I don't, I don't touch anything. Yeah. Yeah. Bump your carbs, bump your calories, and then you'll know within a few days. Yeah. In fact, probably within the same day, but you'll know within a few days if that's the issue. And I'd love to get a follow-up, but- I feel pretty confident that this is what it is, considering everything that you've told us. Doesn't yeah. sound like you're going crazy with anything, but um, I've 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 seen this quite a few times with people who just eat fruit for their carbs or try to avoid the yeah. carbs, especially yeah. very low carb. You start to see some strange things uh, start to happen, and one of the first signs is sleep. So I would bump calories, bump carbs, go ahead and eat some more starchy carbs, white rice or whatever, something you digest very well. I would go at least 250 grams of carbs. That'll probably be your bumping calories. Um, yeah. and then see what happens. See how you feel. All right. Do you think I should continue with the cut considering no. I want to see those levels or is the testosterone dropping a um, hundred? That's points? not, like, that, that's not as much as you think it that's is. Not that, that, could, that could change by the way, yeah. day to day. Yeah. You could have yeah, had I, a, I, mean, I was like, maybe I didn't sleep that well. That's exactly right. That's, a, day, that's so. your, that's a number that you're still in a healthy range. That's, that's actually a lot less. That's not you taking it, uh, having some the night before not good rest could easily have done that little, yep. that little dip like that. Right. Yep. Yeah. I was doing the Doug red light therapy protocol on the testes and I was hoping to crank that up, but <laughs> it drops. And I'm like, fuck, like, yeah, kind of sucks. So, yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And then, and what Adam said too, I think will help if you just chill a little bit with like all yeah. the hacks. Have um, you tried yeah. supplementing with magnesium at all? Or, yeah, I take magnesium and theanine, yeah, um, pretty much every night. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna guess you're doing everything, yeah. yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah I, I don't think yeah. we're gonna, yeah. Just I have these. I have the nerdy red light that. glasses too. So. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Right. You're doing it all, bro. You're doing, <laughs> I mean, that yeah, might be maybe, part maybe of the problem. Of what just saying, saying, yeah, yeah, I think you just need to chill a little bit. And what what Sal is saying is really cool because it's a it's a real easy, obvious thing. I would. I mean, I, I don't know if I would push it hella hard, but I would like really load up on carbs, and I and it, you'll you'll see it faster because he could be he could be depleted for a while, and if he only goes up like a hundred grams, it might still take a couple days. I'm just you know the reason why I said a hundred is because uh, you might get some gastro distress. I mean, your microbiome has now changed and adapted 
adapted to how you eat and pushing it too hard might cause bloat. Or I mean, I think if like you that. bumped a, a cup and a half of white rice earlier in the day and a cup and a half of rice towards the end of the day that night, let's see how you sleep. Look at the studies on eating carbohydrates as the last meal, you know, yeah. two, three hours before bed. Yeah. And and look what they yeah. say on sleep. It's pretty interesting. And, and literally doing that for a couple of days, like we should get our, you should get a, a, a response. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If, if that's what it is. That and, should, and then HDL, test. HDL, I mean, uh, you know, fish, fat, you know, omega threes. For yeah. many th many people make a pretty significant impact. You know, high EPA fish oil tends to not always, but tends to make a big difference. Yeah, I was just wondering if I was like too lean or like, and that I was like negatively impacting all these markers. But I think I'm just gonna. I mean, that could be. We didn't ask you that. How, how what's your body fat percentage right now? I didn't I I knew this was coming, and I swear I previewed this in my email. I wasn't sending this just to be like narcissistic, but I did send a picture in the thread just to give you a general idea of if I'm too lean or not. I don't know. I'm like 10 pounds, 15 pounds down. So is it, if I am too lean, then I wouldn't know. Is it the, I feel fine. Is it the naked one that Doug had on his phone earlier? <laughs> no, he already no, saved it. No, no. <laughs> that was I didn't know that was the right email. Oh, oh that was a different guy. Yeah, I don't, I don't oh, think yeah. so. Yeah, 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 yeah. For some reason, we don't have the picture, but you, you give us an answer. You got a full six pack? Are you like set 10 uh, or below? Oh, I sent it. Um, I, I would say it's around 12. Oh, but okay. I'm like no. very bad, I guess. It's there. I sent it. Um, I mean, okay. if you're around 12, I don't think you're bad. If yeah. you were going to say six or lower or something like that, then that absolutely yeah. could. No, but, no, but, I know, definitely. Yeah, I bumping the so. calories, bumping the carbs, um, I think should probably do it. But I'd love a follow-up. I'd love a follow-up, Matt. Yeah. Let us know what's going In fact, are you in our forum? I'm not in your forum. All right, we'll put you in there. And then a, a week after trying that, let us know what's going on. Because if it doesn't work, then we'll look a little deeper. Okay, cool. Sounds thank good. Thank you, guys. You guys, right, appreciate you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Take it easy, bro. Time on, and you guys get better and better. So thank you. Awesome, Thanks, brother. Man. Appreciate it. I'm telling you, I wouldn't be able to sleep with the, those dudes it's on the wall. <laughs> <It's laughs> that, that's the issue, huh? What is going on? <laughs> no, I think, um, uh, I've look, I've worked with people. I remember when, uh, you know, even the, the the most ardent supporters of Atkins, data would keep coming out. And they're like, yeah, once a week, you should probably have carbs. I mean, we watched Paul go through that. I know. We, I know. we watched Paul. Paul went like from just me. Zero, yeah. To, oh, honey. Yeah, honey. Honey, honey and fruit. Honey and fruit. Yeah. Now every day. Yeah. <laughs> or every yeah. week. Every I week. sweet potato sometimes. Actually, I need this a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it, because, because you could survive doing something doesn't make it ideal. But no. like, you know, with the, with the carb thing, um, you go too low for too long. And there's an individual variance with this. Sleep, sleep starts to become an issue um, for some people. So, and I don't think he was overtrained, but I do think he needs to bump his calories too. Yeah, but we'll know. We'll know within a week. I, I think a combination of that. With, I do think he's, he's very over analytical. Yes, I mean that's the other part. I, that's I think a combination of low low calorie, low carb, and then like just being over analytical. I bet if he would have just kind of let go of that for a week or two, yep. I bet he'd feel a lot better. Hey, real quick, here's the August special. We got two programs on sale, fifty percent off. Maps bands half off. And MAPS 40 plus, that's also 50% off. If you want either one, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code AUGUST50 for that discount. Back to the show. Our next caller is Lauren from Nebraska. Hi, Lauren. Hello, hello. How can we help you? Thank you guys for taking my question. Um, I've seen you guys at NCI events, so it's cool to be able to continue to stay connected. And that's why you look familiar. Your... Awesome. Yeah. yeah, thanks for showing up to those. Those are great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my question is I'm an online nutrition coach and I'm pretty frequently running into clients who seem to hit a wall with their appetite as we work to build their macros up. Um, I really emphasize resistance training to help build their metabolism, try to get them their appetite to speed up as well. But I still have a lot of ladies who tell me they physically can't eat any more food. And this is at a point where we haven't even gotten them to maybe like 2000 calories yet. I personally like to stay away from dipping lower than 1500 calories for a cut. Um, but I wonder if there's any benefit to doing this for like two to three weeks, just to like give them what they're asking for, or if it's more of something where I just need to keep working on my communication skills and, or not push up macros any further and just have them stay where they're at until maybe their appetite increases as like they, their resistance training continues and all of that. I have a handful of strategies for this. Uh, one of them is doing what you're kind of saying where you put them on a, a, a quick cut uh, or a, fa a day of fast. Like I'll, I'll fast them sometimes for a day and then go back again. So, or a small uh, mini cut. The other thing is uh, encouraging them to start 
with meals earlier than they're used to and small, right? So I break up the meals uh, in smaller meals and getting them going early on. So a lot, sometimes clients have a hard time with that. They're also the same clients who are like, they don't eat their first meal till like noon or they kind of do this intermittent fasting stuff all the time or they're for, they have coffee. That's all they have for breakfast and it's like really light and then they're just behind on calories all day. So getting them started early uh, helps out a lot. The other thing, so the third thing I would do is change the stimulus. So if I have a client that trains a certain way, uh, just, you know, the typical strength training, like putting them on like a map strong type of a program or, or old timey or teaching them a really new movement that's unique, that's going to be a new stimulus to the body, sometimes will shoot up that appetite. Between those three strategies, I can normally get them through this I'm full, you know, mentality when they're at such a low calorie still because, yeah, you're right. Like if you got somebody who's only eating 1,900, 2,000 calories and they're telling you their stuff while they also want to lose 25 or 30 pounds, it's like you as a coach got to know that that's a dead end. Like we're yeah. not going to be able to get them to that. Goal. And even if we could, you're going to put them in a place that's not healthy, not sustainable. We got to get that that metabolism going. And those three things uh, tend to be my tools I go to the most. Uh, yeah, excellent advice. Mm -hmm. There's only a couple things I can add. One of them is to make sure that they're not experiencing bloat or digestive issues oh, from point. what they're eating right because that'll kill your appetite too and, and and women are far more likely to experience bloat uh than men are it's actually quite common and so they'll be like god i i can't eat anymore and then the follow-up question will be how do you feel oh i feel stuffed do you feel bloated does your does it feel like your, your tummy's bloated yes okay let's look at what you're eating and let's see if we can change what you're eating so that it's easier to digest and so sometimes switching things out will make the difference uh, from them feeling bloated uh, or not. So that's one of the first things um, that I would do. The that, second thing, that's a great hack. This yeah, and it's a big one by the way. That yeah, would huge. I, this hack, you, I, I can't believe I missed that. That was something that got me through my own calorie bulking. Was I found this hack? If I eat sushi, like just fish and rice, digested so easily mm -hmm. that I could eat 800 calories of that, and then I was hungry a half hour later again. Yeah. If you've ever experienced something like that, and so finding meals like that, oh, yeah. that they digest really, really well. Uh, it, it will help them get that. And they I, might be eating something that's not digesting well. No, really no. Well. It's typically uh, gluten or some kind of a carb uh, or they might even have an intolerance we're not aware of. Um, but that's, that's a big one. It's a big one. It's more common for women than men, but men can exper experience this as well. And then, and then the, second thing, the, the second thing I was going to add is sometimes I just keep them where they're at. Okay, no problem. We're not going to go up in calories, but we're not going to cut any calories. And then just really focus on their workout programming. And then what happens, they just slowly get leaner because their body starts to burn more calories as they get stronger. Like if I can get somebody to get stronger pretty consistently, I often don't need to change their calories and I'll see them get leaner because their metabolism will start to boost. So those are the only two things that I could add. To, That's why I really like the changing the stimulus yeah, exactly. to something so unique because it'll, it'll automatically do that. If you got a client who's uh, never done a Turkish get up or never done an exercise that's yeah. so unique, you're going to send a signal to build muscle because she's going to wake up muscles how she's never how, used. How many of these clients do you have? Because I'm sure there's specific clients that you're thinking of, right? <clears throat> yeah. So I have two of them in particular that are in, one's going through menopause right now, one's postmenopausal. And then I have a girl that's 32 okay. and she's kind of hitting that same type of wall. But I didn't even think about the digestive piece because she's also one of my clients with the most amount of gut issues. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, that, oh, yeah. That, yeah. The young, the young, uh, young girl, uh, digestive issues, the younger, for some reason, that seems to be a bigger issue. Um, are any of them doing a low rep based workout right now where they're doing like sets of three or four reps, moderate high intensity at most? No, I think that I'm trying to think one of them I have on like a, basically maps anabolic, but the other ones are, <laughs> they're a little bit more challenging. I'm trying to get them to transition away from like these like YouTube influencer yeah. type workouts <laughs> or these like app type workouts. And I'm like, here, I have this programming, like, let's just try it. Yep. Um, so I think that could be even more of uh, like a, like a suggestion, like this is what's going to also help us build your appetite up. And this is what's going to help you get to your goals faster. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't, I wouldn't even sell it like that. Uh, so maps anabolic phase one. That was the appetite stimulator for all my female clients, mainly because most of them never trained, you know, sets of three or four reps. They just didn't. Um, so the way I would sell it is I'd say, all right, 
here's how we're going to boost your metabolism. This is going to fire your metabolism up. Oh, I love that. And then, you know, it's going to happen. So our appetite's going to go up. But phase one, MAPS anabolic is, would be the way to go. If they're not training that way now, that's exactly what I'd do. And I'd keep them there until they're like, um, I'm starving. Cool. Let's bump your calories. And then you can work with different programming after. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. They all have, I mean, so far to go with their weight loss journey and that's just it. It's like, I don't want them yeah. to hit this wall right away. That's a dead end. Like you said, Adam, and I think those are two strategies I can definitely implement right away with them. So yeah. exactly. Thank you. And then again, as a coach, you're selling it like this. We're in the phase of speeding up your metabolism. We're still in the phase and then we'll get out of that at some point, but we still need to speed up your metabolism because you got to sell it. Cause yeah. I know what a, what a pain in the ass it is to try to sell this to someone that wants to lose weight. Like they don't want to hear, yeah. I need to increase my appetite. I'll yeah. just eat less. Then I'll be fine, right? You know, they don't want to hear that. Well, and you communicate what I just said to you. Say it to them like that. Like, listen, I could cut you right now. We could lose a couple pounds, but then I'm going to have done. you. I'm doing. I'm going to have you down to 800 calories, and you know, I'm pretty sure you want to keep that weight off, right? And they're going to say yes, and you say, well, you're not going to be able to eat 800 calories for the rest of your life. That's going to drive you crazy. You're going to want to go have wine with the girls every once in a while. You're going to want to do some of these things, and you're not going to be able to do that. Because we rush this. We want to do it the right way, right? And then that's how I would close them on that. Exactly. Awesome. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. That's super helpful. You got it, Lauren. Thank right you. On, Lauren. Thank you. We'll see ya. Thank you. I'm glad you asked this question because- Good question. Well, uh, I don't think- I think a lot of people don't even consider this can be a thing. Yeah. Like, what do you mean you don't want to eat more? I oh, it's actually, well, very common. It's yeah. relatively that's common. That's why I had like- That's very, why you knew exactly I, I, what yeah, to say. Yeah, yeah. I was like, this is not a- a new, in fact, that's one of the hardest things and one of the traps that trainers fall into is they're trying to do what they've heard is right, say from us or totally. somebody else, and then their client is just like, I can't, can't I can't anymore, and I want to lose, and so then they go, okay, they, they just abide, yeah. and they go, okay, then they cut them, and then that, that temporarily makes the client happy, so they think they're kind of solving the problem, but then the inevitable happens is they hit a wall, they hit a plateau and or get so low a calorie where they're at at their goal that they can't sustain it. So yeah, and the digestive, ad, that piece right there, man. Yeah, that was like, a great, great oh, yeah. what a great point because I, re, boy, I recall oh, yeah. trying to get myself- I, I think everybody can think of a meal right now yes, that'll make them so the limiter. bloated and yeah. full. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And that was a huge hack was the the morning, getting myself started early in the morning to like really fire up the metabolism, right? So get it, eating earlier than I normally would. And then actually the sushi hack was big for me. I could go eat like yep. 800 to yep. 1,000 calories of sushi and a half hour earlier, I could turn around and have another steak yeah. meal. My first tracked bulk was a fail because I just looked at macros and literally my breakfast consisted of, this is not a joke, it was 10 scrambled eggs and a punch bowl of <laughs> Cheerios <laughs> with whole milk yeah. for the carbs. And I couldn't hit my calories. I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. And eventually I was like, you know, I'm just going to eat meat and rice. And that's easy for me to digest. It was so much easier. Our next caller is Zach from Florida. What's up, Zach? How you guys doing today? Good, Sal, man. Justin, yeah. What's happening, dude? How are we going to help you? How can we help you? I got a couple of questions for you guys. I want to make it as simple as possible. I came prepared. Oh, good. Easy uh, ones. We like easy ones. Yeah, I just want to ask like a couple stack things. of notes. What do you mean simple? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go ahead. <laughs> um, I'm tw 31 years old. Um, I'm 5'7". I started uh, my journey about six months ago uh, at 160. I cut down to 135 pounds at about 8% body fat. Um, I maintained it for a couple of months until I got to the point where I was just way too hungry and I, I just couldn't do it anymore. I work a bank job, so it really wasn't necessary. It was just for self-discipline. Um, couple questions eating from 1500, I went to 22 that I thought was a fair maintenance. Then I pushed to 2,600. I'm more hungry than ever. <laughs> I'm hungrier now than I was eating 1500. Help me out with that. That's a, that's a good sign, bro. Yeah, are that, you get, are you getting stronger in the gym? Yeah, yeah. I bet you are. Um, I, I mean, I lost 25 pounds and most of my weight maintained or went up. I would consider that stronger if my weight is lowered. I'm doing the same weight, but you guys are the pros. Yeah. No, no. I mean, since you've bumped your calories, have you seen yeah. the strength gains? Yeah. Uh, a little bit on my bench, a, a little bit on my dumbbell. It's only been a couple of weeks. Oh, um, really so I, I don't know if I'm stronger, or if I just had a couple good days, I'm yeah. still kind of figuring that out. Well, you are stronger because you lifted more, but what's your routine look like? Um, I do... The same workout twice a week. So I'll do uh, chest, tries, and shoulders twice a week. I'll do back, buys, rear delts twice a week, and then legs twice a week, and then cardio in between. And then sometimes before the gym, I'll do 100 pull-ups, 100 push-ups, yeah. 100 crunches. That's what yeah. I thought. I, got I go bad, hard. I got yeah. bad news for you, Zach. <laughs> yeah. 
You sh- you you, yeah. you the, okay. You got a little stronger in spite of the fact that you're doing a shitty workout. Yeah, <laughs> you're doing yeah, way you too much. Program, bro, are you not following a maps program, bro? Dog? You're you're how freaking, are you not following a maps program? You're way you're doing way too much with your workout. Way too, if you did yeah. maps and a bollock, wait, okay? put that work to wait use. Say how long you been listening, Zach? How long you been listening to the podcast? I just started this journey seriously probably like six to eight months ago. Okay. I just found out about before I never cared about weightlifting or nothing. Okay, so well, about six to eight months. We're going to give watching, you a- I've, I've watched all your old videos to try to learn too. Okay. Sure. And we didn't close you on a program. Back <laughs> That's our bad. <laughs> no, so right, we're no, yeah. we're going we to give, it, we're gonna give it to you. Okay. We're going to give it to you. But then I, I want you to definitely call back in after we blow your mind when you actually follow Bro, a structured program. You're, you're going to gain- You're going to. You're going to gain strength and muscle. It's going to blow you away yeah. by switching from your shitty yeah. overtraining workout- <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> to maps anabolic. Keep your calories. I don't care. Keep yourself at 2,600. Stay in your bowl. Right where you're at. You're par- perfect. And now, and then go maps anabolic. And don't do anything extra, no. Zach. Follow it to just a T. Don't do a bunch of pull ups and push ups and tons of cardio and all that shit. Just forget Completely it. Completely new training protocol. Just stay active. So make sure you're, you're walking regularly. I don't want you on a treadmill mm-hmm. running unless you want to be in, a, unless you like endurance and stamina. And that's a thing for you. Just focus on walking. Follow Maps Anabolic. Keep your diet where it's at. In in literally in two months, you're gonna oh yeah you're gonna write back to us and be like, okay, what the fuck? I'm I'm lifting twice as much as I was yeah, before, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I've built all this muscle. <laughs> okay, okay. So what am I doing? What am I doing wrong? Is it the volume? Yeah, Is, yeah. If yeah, I do a lot of high rep, a lot of high rep workouts. 2025. You're going to stack on so much muscle just in the you get the first month. Dude. You're going to see a difference. Yeah, you're yeah. just you're just doing too much of everything. Yeah, dude. Even and then your extremes, okay. you a hard cut cardio, doing all this stuff like that, way too much volume yeah. and training, and then the yeah. other like just literally don't touch the diet, leave it where it's at. You're perfectly fine where you're eating. Anabolic phase and one's good. Follow anabolic to a T. Do not add fun. anything to don't it. Don't add anything. You could do the three day a week version, that's fine, but don't yeah. add any extra shit. Yeah. No matter what you think, just and then watch your strength go through the roof. And since you're not familiar with the programs, I want to make something clear for you too. It, the trigger days are very, very light. It is not a, yep. you're not trying to- It's not to, another workout. It's not a workout. Low to moderate, it's like literally low. Pumping, your, pumping your arms up real quick. It is not, in fact, I would almost let him cut those. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah, yeah, no, trigger know. sessions are not workouts. They're just, just you get a little pump. Recovery. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So when you read the program, you're going to see three foundational workouts. That's your workouts. And then you're going to see trigger sessions on off days. Trigger sessions are just to get a little pump. The foundational days, that's your actual workout. I don't want you to lift to failure on your foundational workout days. You're going to stop about one or two reps before you fail. Just follow that okay. with your current diet and watch what happens. Yep. Beautiful. Yeah, because I have no problem with the regimen. I mean, I eat potatoes, rice, um, a couple of meat sources, and I, I don't miss. Like, I follow yeah. it. Like, discipline. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do nothing. I'm bar- No caffeine. I, I try to be very, very. We're gonna blow your mind, bro. Yeah. Hey. We're gonna blow your mind. Yeah, yeah. That, that's amazing because I've never been the here. strong. I, I always get made fun of for being sad, like a thirteen-year-old. So yeah. I really want to try to put some muscle on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, you're just oh, you're just, you jacked, dude. Uh, Don't even worry. We yeah. just got to point you in the right direction. That's you're gonna a, you're gonna blow your mind. Yeah. Beautiful. And I have uh, one more. Uh, if you guys don't mind, yeah, I just want to learn from the pros. Um, I have it all written down. Oh man, so. I watched some of your old videos. Um, I'm a numbers guy. I like to get the macros to the T. And I noticed how you guys have mentioned uh, 0.8 to 1.1 grams of protein per body weight. Um, I noticed a lot of your old videos where you have mentioned that a lot of people just cannot get to that number. I weigh 140 pounds. I could do that in a meal and a half. My issue is when I was going in my calorie surplus, I found myself eating way too many fats and carbs to make up that calorie number that I needed. If I'm active and I'm feeling okay, can I go to that 1.25, 1.3 grams per yeah. pound? Oh yeah. If yeah. I'm okay, you're yeah, fine, dude. You're, yeah, you're fine. You're bro. fine. Even if you were at one gram per pound of body weight and the rest was fat and carbs, and you're eating 2,600 calories, you're fine. Yep. Yeah, you're yep. you're over- so it's okay to go higher on the protein as long as I'm like yeah, my, my yeah, dude, is and okay. relax. You're yeah. over, you're getting, you're you're overdoing it. Like seriously, yeah. you're totally fine. Yeah, eat. Go ahead and eat 140 grams of protein a day, 150 grams of protein a day. Yeah. Make up the difference with fat and carbs. Whatever you, whatever's easy for you, whatever feels good. Stick to whole natural foods. Follow Maps Anabolic. You are going to blow your mind with the strength and muscle gains just from doing that. Yep. Yep. Okay. Perfect. And. 
Um, in regards to like eating the more calories, um, I know this could be a mental thing. I've seen your videos a bunch of times. I just need to hear it again. Obviously, I gained a little bit of water weight because I fell in love with being shredded, mm -hmm. you know, and and I'm starting to feel a little bit of pudginess because I doubled up my fats and my carbs are through the roof. When When is it something I need to be concerned about? And when is it continue to trust the bulk? What, what, what is that guideline? Uh, it's going to be a while from now. You yeah. know, you're you, coming from 8%, bro. Yeah, you're dude. Fine. You're, I mean, a healthy yeah. body fat percentage is anywhere between like nine to like 16%. Yeah, you're fine. So it's going to be a personal preference thing, yeah. but I, I, you're a way overthinking it. Uh, and honestly, if you, cause you like the shredded look, you're actually going to have a tendency to want to go reverse out of it well before you, you need to. I have a prediction so that, though. So I think you're going to fall in love with being strong yeah. uh, and you're not going to worry about it anymore. Yeah. And being shredded. It's cool. Being strong is way more fun. Oh, yeah. So you'll see. You'll see. Yeah, yeah. You'll 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 see this about four weeks in. You're gonna be like, oh, okay. I see what's going on here. Jack, I'm gonna I'm gonna have Doug also put you in our private forum. So you're getting all this free shit. So you better fall, okay? And then I. And oh then no, I, I'm okay. I, I don't miss. And then I want you to check in with us monthly. Just check in. Give us a post. Let us know how things are going as far as the diet, being consistent with it, strength, all that stuff like that. How you're liking the program? Any questions about it? Check check in with us in the forum at least once a month. Guys, this is this is such a blessing. I'm super excited. Like I said, I've been kind of doing these numbers. I'm a big numbers guy, and yes, overthinking it. I, I I'll, I'll sit sometimes working my macros forever, <laughs> thinking 175 is too much protein, and then I move it to 170. So this is going to be really good for me, and um and this is going to be awesome. I'm I'm really excited to do that, and I feel a lot better because I was really concerned with some of these issues of just being way too hungry. So when is that going to go away? That's, that you I'm don't want that. That's a good, yeah, that's you, a good sign, bro. Who cares? Fuel, your, fuel it, man. That feeling that you have right now, one is your body saying, thank you for feeding me what I wanted mm -hmm. and what I need. And then two, we're putting on muscle and mm -hmm. we need more. Yeah. So just stay, just stay the course. Just eat whole so natural foods. That's yeah. about it. Like, yeah. What you don't want to do is start eating a bunch of garbage. Cause that's right. when things can And go. that's when the body fat percentage will get crazy. Yeah, if yeah. you eat when you're hungry and make it from whole foods, I don't I go to town. Can you yeah. use it? Yeah. I actually don't even care if you go higher in calories, but where you'll go, where you'll start seeing the body fat percentage go from nine, 10, 12, 13, four is when you start adding junk food. And if you don't yeah. do that, you're going to be, throws everything you're gonna be fine, bro. You're going to be good. No, I, I make sure, I make sure, especially I, I've seen enough of your guys' videos where you always mention the whole foods. I mean, I'm, I keep it really simple. Potatoes and rice is my carb source and cream of rice and oatmeal. And then I do one meat a day, beef, chicken, turkey, and I alternate in rotation oh, man, and that's good. it. You're going to be good, yeah. dog. You're yeah, you're fine. Yeah. We're going to get you jacked. Yeah, can't wait to see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, Give dude. us updates every 30 days, okay? Awesome. I really appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. Like I said, I, I learned so much from you guys. I just wanted to just own in on some of this from the professionals. So I'm, I, I really thank you guys for the opportunity. And I'm looking forward to looking like a like a man. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we, got you, we got you. You look like it, a dude. brother. Yeah, we All got, right, we got All right you. man. All right. Thanks, thank bro. you guys. You got it. I, I would, I would, I, this, that's it, that client, I would love. Oh, client. yeah, bro. Because I'd be like, oh, cool. Yeah. Just, Two weeks from now, you're going to be like, oh, what the hell's going on? Why yeah. am I getting so strong? this knob a bit. Oh, yeah, God. Yeah. I knew it when he was saying all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what's your workout? I bet you're overtraining the shit out of yourself. Yeah, he really is. Sure enough, six, six, six days split. Oh, all training. these reps, Pull up dude. some push-ups Bring it down to cardio. low reps. Yeah, like, dude. oh, my God, his body's going to respond like <laughs> yeah, crazy. Oh, he's going to do so good, bro. He, you see, too, you hear he said he always does high reps. Yeah. Wait, phase one. He's That's gonna, what I'm saying. Oh, it's going to blow his yeah, mind. Four weeks, he's already going to see a difference. So I can't wait to- It's a good time. Yeah, I can't wait to hear him feedback, call back in.